could potentially go faster if we're not seeing anything exciting. Um, it's fine by me. Great. Yeah, let's do it. Raj. Let's book it. Uh, how's 0 0.5 sound? Do we Speedy. like that? <laughs> <laughs> sure. S speed of Sports light. Sounds good. Sprint yeah. over. Okay. okay. Roger. <laughs> Bridge, Nath. Could we increase speed to 0 0.5 knots? Thank you. Uh, could we step five zero meters bearing zero five five? It's awesome. Have we conducted some introductions? Let's do it. Team Fabulous. <laughs> Team Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Well, hello world. My name is Brandy Jones, serving as your science communication fellow. I'm from Houston, Texas. Very excited to be here. Mm -hmm. And this is your 12 mm -hmm. to 4 watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, please share your questions with me so I can send it over to the team. Passing it over to <coughs> our scientists. Good morning, everyone. Look at our lovely view of some kind of nice-ish rocks in a field <laughs> of sediment. <laughs> I'm Amber Saravalo from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I am sitting in the science chair. Next to me is our watch lead. Hello, world. Um, my name is Megan Lubetkin, and I'm the watch lead for 12 to 4 and excited for this dive. Hello everyone, I'm Mary Dury and I am the data logger. Hello, uh, my name is Nia Beckler and I am sitting nav. Hey, I'm Gabby Inglis and I'm in the Herc seat. Good morning, I'm Kylie Pasternak sitting Argus. Good morning, this is Ryan Leung, sitting video engineer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, either way, I don't, it's, it's hard for me to tell. <clears throat> Could we get a zoom on the surface of this darker rock. Yeah, sure. Go for zoom. I guess just the edge has been scoured a little bit to free it from the sediment to make it a bit darker. Yeah, and there's and a shrimp and maybe a, some some kind of some little stick. Is it a coral? <laughs> Is this what you're looking for? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, go wide. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, I know. It's exciting. A little spicy. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I'll want to get rid of some of it. Like, we'll slow down when it starts to get, yeah. Amber, do you want to take a moment to share um, some of the things you're hoping to find during today's watch? Ah, we shall see if we find any of them. I'm looking for some nice volcanic rocks. So while we have rocks over here that are probably volcanic, uh, they're very heavily covered in sediment and um, there's no loose pieces anywhere. And they're probably really encrusted with um, this black crustal material, which is not something I can use. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for some really nice sized angular rocks that don't have a bunch of crust on them and are not very heavily sedimented. Because I'm going to take them, crush them up, and try to get a date on them for figuring out how old this seamount is. You say this so nice. Crush him up. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Gabby, I think that's a Holothurian. <laughs> Gabby's very enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Her favorite creature. Go for Zoom. This might be a very oh, sleep yeah. Story checks watch out. <laughs> Go on. Is that just tilt there? Okay. No, you're good. Miss Mary, can you share with our audience some of things you're looking course. for? Uh, I'm a biologist, so I'm looking forward to all of the, specifically the coral that we're going to see. And then even more specifically, I'm looking for a very specific type of bamboo coral that I call a sparse brancher. So. Megan has taken to calling me a sparse brancher <laughs> since I talk about it so much. But it is just a bamboo coral that looks like a whip coral and suddenly has branches. So kind of investigating that. Nice. I see rocks. <laughs> this is a slightly bigger outcrop. Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Point three is fine. When we get a little bit closer, can we get a zoom on those rock pieces? Sure thing. Ooh. And I think that'll also zoom in on these lovely ripples that are right on the edge here as well. Mm -hmm. These are really nice ripples. Mm -hmm. I feel like sediment gets sort of a tough break, but there's some really nice okay, textures in the zoom. sediment. Mm -hmm. There is. It's just it's just the two things that we're looking for. There's a stocked sponge off there. There is. Distance. And look at all this alteration down here. Is this what you're looking for, Science? Yes, thank you. It's great. We can, we can go wide when you're ready. Go wide. <coughs> oh, there's a little sponge or somebody on that rock. It might yeah. be dead. Maybe a coral? Maybe. Very Maybe alteration. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> And a shrimp. And did you want a zoom or anything on the ripples? Um, yes, please. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Go for zoom, like a half zoom. That's great. Here's a shrimp. Nice. Okay, go on. Mm -hmm. 
Are we able to keep looking at the rock, or is it going off in the wrong direction? Um, I'll stick with it as long as I can. Okay, cool. I might be a little disoriented here, but is the bigger rock that's to our left, is that actually downslope or is that yes, upslope? Yes, it is. Good observation. Oh. oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So. It also looks pillowy, but mm. it's kind of confusing. This is the slope. We've got these <coughs> sediment covered things and then that just sticking up. Do yeah, you have any interest in all this rock up here this way? No, no, actually. No. 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 Those are bad rocks. <laughs> those are not nice. The reason I was trying to tempt you with those is that they are easier to follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are not, no. Well, I can see no interest. <laughs> <laughs> These are not the rocks you're looking for. <laughs> well, uh -huh. it's Rats. interesting. Is that like Abby? I would even like the left substrate because better for corals. <laughs> Yeah, we've ah, well, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> we've already seen one sponge on them, so we know that these rocks have life on them, whereas Pretty the other sure. ones have... Uh, we haven't seen that yet. ...a whole bunch of sediment. Okay, well, I'll follow them as long as I can. Yeah, Could no worries. Two zero meters bearing but zero it's so five strange five. that they're down slow. Well, so w what I was going to say is that if you look at our high pack, we have this kind of unusual little, little rounded feature. Uh, yeah, we're going over, so I think that it looks like uh, we're kind of at this like flat spot where we currently are, whereas off to the starboard side is is uphill, but I think it's uphill all the way around, except um, off to the port, right? Except, well, we don't have contours over here. Okay. Uh, our map ends, so don't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a black hole. <laughs> but I, I exist. described this as a plateau in my overview, and I'm looking at it again and thinking that is not, it's almost like a bowl. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, it's upslope in every direction, except I think if you were to go that way. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre the way the contours sort of end. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we can only, so the surface that we're looking at, uh, we contour to the surface. Right. And that surface. Oh, it's like a square, yeah. Yeah, that's the edge of it right yeah, there. Yeah, I see um, that. Hmm. So unfortunately, we don't have data over there. Yeah. Oh. Something weird is going on. All right. Interesting. Well, then I'm looking forward to, what is it, waypoint four, where we have another one of these. Me too. And it looks like we're just now reaching the edge of that feature. That's quite something. If that is a giant basalt block that slipped down, then it slipped down a very long time ago mm -hmm. and was very large, which is possible. But it is also very different from the features uphill that we're looking at now. So, so much sediment. Oh, 
Lord, it just keep coming. Yes. Thank you. Peter. Yep, two th Hall Authorians in a little group. Maybe they're conversing. Huh? What is a group of Hall Authorians called? Oh, that is the question. <laughs> I don't think there's an actual name for it, Amber, if you're looking it up. I, I was just A guessing. pickle of sea cucumbers. <laughs> oh, I love that. I have so a, a, a group pickle. of sea cucumbers is called a pickle. <laughs> it's so cute. But they're quite the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> is a group of whales called a song? Uh, that was a pod. Oh, yeah, that, that's a pod. I no, feel like that should be a song, though. That sounds that nice. A pod, wasn't a pod a dolph for dolphins? I thought oh, that was look. There's rocks. <laughs> what, what about a group of rocks? <laughs> a geologist? <laughs> Rubble. Oh. A cluster. But it's so nice. <clears throat> Quite high, <coughs> little localized topographic highs. Yeah, this is interesting. Is that is this a boulder we're seeing? It's kind of hard to tell. I, at least these first two features here in Argus view definitely look like they're, uh, yeah, big boulders. Behind it might be different. Hmm. Are you interested in a rock here? These are nice rocks. Oh. We only have two. We have to get at least three. There's if we could loose look rocks. at the rock that's to the left, it also has a sponge on it. Over here? Yes. Oh. And then can look and see if I actually like these rocks. I'm not <laughs> quite so sure because of this what's is. going on underneath here. This looks sediment, sediment rich. It just uh, does, yeah. If, if we're going to hang here, I'm going to go ahead and stop the yep. ship. That sounds good. Bridge nav, could we hold position? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of layback here cool. that we're going to do like with, so we're not going to, like, we're not really going to be hanging in this spot. Okay, Roger. Is there a possibility to take a very quick sample and then yes. keep moving? Yep. Okay. If, you if we one. decide quickly. Okay. Yeah. Do you want one, Ember? Sure. Now it's just deciding which one. Uh, how big is? Oh my. Go ahead. These this guy big. right there. Um, also, I do have to get a sense for what this little lip is like and how yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that an actually is quite That's a little... Hmm. Can you come down a bit? And That's quite the nice little sponge. Ah, uh, that's okay. We don't need to try for that rock. Okay. Oh, is that a jellyfish? Yes. Do you it want any other rocks so. here, just so that we don't miss it if we have to keep no. moving? No. Okay. I don't need any other rocks. The rocks here. All right. Jellyfish, okay, come can with us. Can, yeah, can we get it? That is wow. a good question. Yeah, hmm. this is an interesting shape of jelly. The long tail jelly? Is it a Tina 4 instead? Maybe? It sort of reminds me of that one that we saw tumbling around yesterday. Yeah, go for that it. so weird. And I'm going to take back the team oh, for comment. I that love the so lighting. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love I that. love that lighting style. Yeah, that's yeah. Very that's pretty. no upper and no mid. Nice. That's wonderful. Sure, for a moment. Yeah. Quite 
like the nice looking little guy. <laughs> this makes me feel better. A what? What? <laughs> Beautiful job, Ryan. Thank you. Oh, there's another little sponge. All right, so locally, little hints of biology. This is pretty neat terrain. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice really cool. little canyon here. And to the right, you can see it's trying to form, I think, sedimentary layers. Quite thick. Yeah, the boulder is so big in Argus's view. Yeah. Right on top of it. Oh, hello, fish. It's a really interesting formation below us. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Argus view is pretty cool. It, it definitely is. is. So this area, I think, is has a really either high sedimentation rate or it's just been collecting for such a long time that these are these are quite the sedimentary layers that we're looking at here. But then on top <coughs> of it, is that just a crust or? Can we get a zoom on these layers? Thank you. Go for zoom. Wow. Mm. Look at all that sand. <laughs> Interesting. So is the crust on the sedimentary rocks the same as the crust that forms on the volcanic rocks, or does it depend on the chemical composition? Science, of I'd like to keep moving along, yep. if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Sure keep thing, moving. Gabby. I mean, I actually don't want to keep moving along. I want to stay here, but <laughs> that's just not the way it is. Yeah, but that's yes, fine. That's fine. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Let's go. And then over to that side, that actually looks like volcanic yeah. rock on top of it. but then a rubble pile of crust e material and maybe kind of low bait yeah that that looks like low bait to answer your question nia um i'm not actually sure i would have to ask corley about that i would assume the crust would be the same on all the types of rocks but i actually would not know Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. I'll uh, I'll ask Corley about that when I get a chance. I also wonder if uh, if chemically there's no difference between the two. If uh, the sort of type of crust that forms, if it's more diffuse or if it's more of a really nice standalone layer of crust, if that is at all uh, related to the type of rock that it's on. Mm, yeah. Because a lot of our more altered rocks, the crust isn't actually a very nice layer in and of itself. It kind of just sinks through, for lack of a better phrase, this early in the morning. <laughs> <clears throat> the crusts do tend to kind of break off, though, when, when we break, o when we break open the rocks. Sometimes. Uh, all right, I'm going to get us moving again. Cool. All right. Well, sounds great. Bridge, huh? Could we step to zero meters bearing zero five five?
Amber, uh, the audience wants to know what is the best rock, objectively speaking, like color, shape, size, well, we know angular, <laughs> We're not too much sediment. The best <laughs> rock would be something that has no crust on it, which I will never get because all of the rocks will be encrusted, will be if we found something like columnar basalts Ooh. down here and there were little chunks broken off of it, that would be the absolute perfect rock Can you describe columnar basalt? So if you think of, if you know Giant's Causeway or any of those features of like these sort of, they're almost hexagonal, almost it looks like tiles that are in um, England, Ireland, also Palisades on the Hudson, New York. We there have are these a lot of them in Oregon huge too. Oh, you do have them in Oregon? Yeah, we've got I loads of columnar basalt. I should have actually remembered that. But the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have to get uh, my jive on over here. <laughs> anyway, um, think of these giant pillars of basalt. And they're all... Words can't really do them justice. You really need a good picture of them. Yeah, I know we would probably don't have them in Texas, so. No, you don't <laughs> have them in Texas, no. But they're very, very nice. And the way oh, that it wow. happens is, is they're the cooling joints that form make this sort of hexagonal form. And so you just have these huge pillars of these hexagonal blocks. Oh, wow. And they're amazing to look at. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. I hope you find some, friend. <laughs> Those are beautiful. But yes, so that would be uh, my ideal rock. Got it. What we're going to find potentially a lot of here that's going to be <laughs> so the rocks that we'll probably find here maybe hopefully that I'll be able to collect um, would probably more likely be pillow basalts or from low bait flows so they'll probably be a little bit faster cooling than I'd like. It might be a little bit more altered, but could also have some really good material in them and are more likely to mm -hmm. have uh, be findable and have pieces broken off. Mm -hmm. But here we're just seeing some very interesting stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that would be uh, the best rock, subjectively speaking, by Amber. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, very we subjective don't, we don't to what I work on. We don't have objectively speaking best rock because we have different geologists looking at different things. Yeah, I feel like yeah. every geologist will have a different answer for that question. Yes. What about, what's your favorite rock? Oh. Not your study rock, but your favorite rock. My favorite rock? Does it have to be from here? No, Any it can be anywhere. Any rock that you desire. <laughs> Ah, off the top of my head, I'd have to say a dunite. <laughs> or one of the ultra mafic rocks, because you have these, especially uh, the ones that have the really big crystals in them. So you've got olivines, uh, you can have pyroxenes, and they're these really beautiful green color. And everyone loves them when we see them and bring them out for students. And they're just really, really pretty. And for those that don't know, olivine, uh, the gem quality form of it is peridot. That's so if you just think stone. of that color, these, oh, that's my, son. that's my gemstone. Wait, when's your birthday? <laughs> when's your birthday? August 18th. <laughs> August 14th. <laughs> <laughs> We're Leo's. We're Leo's. That makes now. a lot of sense. Yay. Nice. <laughs> what was your uh, deep sea creature based on your zodiac sign? That Nautilus put out. What? what? Was the Leo. Nautilus you didn't see that? 
I'm not on social media. <laughs> oh. Oh, I actually you. did see that. It's already up. Oh, it's, yeah, it's been up for a little bit. <laughs> Wait, what is this about my zodiac sign? So and Nautilus put together a your deep sea creature based on your zodiac sign. <laughs> my roommate did that. So right. Leo is a deep sea skate. Can no, we we're, we're not. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know if I could agree with those. I'll have you know <laughs> that I voted for, it wasn't a vote, but um, I didn't, obviously didn't, my vote didn't count. Uh, I voted for uh, Tina Fours. Hello. Yeah, because they sparkle. <laughs> they That's reflective true, they sparkle. and they're like kind of amazing. And yeah. Left yeah. the party. Disco balls. <laughs> I feel like I'll have to think about this for a while. Okay. I mean, or we could be sharks, I don't know. <laughs> what is the lion of the sea? Oh my god. A shark, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, that does work. <laughs> the Nautilus is lovely. Yeah. They have amazing shells, but yeah, when you see like their face, it's, it's pretty <laughs> weird. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you, wait, are you saying that you guys should be Nautiluses? Uh, himself? I I was just Googling it and a Nautilus <laughs> showed up and we started looking at the pictures. Because I, I was about to say that's a very Leo thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. To pick which animal you actually are because you don't like the animal that you got. <laughs> oh, I was thinking that, it would be like that you are a Nautilus <laughs> on the Nautilus. <laughs> that too, yeah. What does it say Aries is? Um, a sea star. Oh. But you know that, so guess who is a Chonocops? Is that oh. you? Who? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Chonocops? What month is, is Chonocops? Is it Amber? It's a Libra. What is so it? So not Chonocops. Amber. Not Amber. Do me? we have any Libras on watch? I don't really like what I am. What are you? A cute anglerfish. Well, actually, like I oxymoron. think I could get into it. What? I'm a sea spider. Chonocops. Oh. So is my friend. She did not like that either. <laughs> I think, I think I'm starting something. to like it. I like mine. Stubby squid. Industrious. <laughs> Wait, Cancer is the Dumbo octopus? Yeah. This is a rigged game. Yeah. <laughs> the person that made it probably was a Cancer. Yeah, that's <laughs> you, you are not wrong. <laughs> I'm it, pretty sure, actually. It seems that we have a lot of Cancer signs on this trip, I think. I, I think we have, what, at least five? What, what time of the year is Cancer? July. It's, July, uh, June, July, like early July. This yeah, is the yeah. first year Nautilus has put something like that out. <laughs> <laughs> it did not occur as a group effort idea one day. <laughs> yes, that was well, a transport. lot of us on a social deck. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> did Jamie approve it? She got it approved afterwards. Okay, yes. okay. <laughs> So you just got to hang out on the social deck, and <laughs> you can get what you like. I had no idea that was a project from this piece. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we should do an alternate version of that with, instead of deep sea creatures, deep sea uh, geology. Oh, gosh. Ooh. You guys can have, you the two of you can have fun. Oh. I'm an agate. Or a piece of sea glass, and I won't hear otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> and then there can be an al alternate version of, like, deep sea robotics. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. These weren't really coral, so we could do a deep sea coral, too. One of them's a bubble gum. One of them's a oh, yeah. paragorgine. Okay. Oh, it's just flashy. Megan, do you have a favorite mm. rock? Oh, I was trying to think about that. And I just... The balloon stuff, right? I just feel, like, so <laughs> biased because I really loved studying what I studied for my master's thesis. So Remind us what that was. Yeah, basaltic balloons. So these are very gas-rich, very glassy <laughs> um, basalt. Uh, Can we see how big this little guy is over here? Oh, are you interested? I'm interested. It might be too big. That looks about... But this is a... <coughs> it's got a sort of baked potato size going on. Could we potentially pick him up? Yep. 
I think baked potato size is my new favorite size reference. <laughs> <laughs> it's smaller than a bre bread box. Uh, yeah, like 15 to 20 centimeters. Yeah. Kelly, you want to do this one? Sure. Bridge, Nev, could we hold position? Can you circle it again you. for us? He's actually looking bigger as we get closer to him. This, yeah, this big one. Awesome. Yeah, it might be attached to yeah. So it might be too big, but if we can poke it, I will be happy. Because it's angular. Okay. Can you give me the valve? Say again? Could you give me the valve? Okay. Thank you. Oof. Look at the undersides of all these rocks. Yeah, a lot of iron, iron oxidation. Yeah, it's really big. Quite large. Or heavy, or should no, be heavy. Really? I mean, wow. That's all right. That's that's good. That's I was not expecting right. that. What about? I want this guy. Or you want want that guy? Okay, that guy. What about? Can we reach oh, this yeah. little thing right here? Maybe. That looks attached. And so very does this one. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just pushed myself off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Frank from the UK. Hold tight and we'll get to your question. Give me it. That's okay. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Ooh. Okay. Got myself a little rock. Thank okay. you. Where do you want nice. this to go? Do you need a zoom Where on it or anything? Um, if we can do a 360. B. B. Yeah. Roger. Starboard B. Roger that. 360 video zoom. That's ho that's good. <laughs> Whoa. Is that okay? Mm. Yeah. Okay. We will see how this looks. Okay, come wide. Okay. <coughs> Uh, data, is this 085? Yes. Raj. Okay, sample salvo. Thank you. That's not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, the salvos are a little bit of a grab bag. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> Could go anyway. <laughs> So what are we going to see this time? Uh, did you hear B? B, Raj. I wonder if I kind of prefer it without the starboard and port lights. I don't think I do. At least because, like, the, the one in the back, that view, I can't see anything. Mm, okay. So we have a question from Frank who's in the UK. He uh, posed this question to the last watch and wasn't able to get a response, so I'll Oops. give him a second try. Um, he posed a question about spawning trigger events on corals and sponges at this depth. What are your thoughts about that? Um, I actually don't know a lot about that. Um, so I yeah. don't know if I have an answer for that. Um. That's very, very outside of my expertise, so I can't <laughs> offer anything either. Well, Frank, we Sorry. gave it a try. <laughs> we have somebody doing a little research, so we'll get back with you and see what we can find. So if I go, 
If I go, like I roll that straight, like that, okay. Okay, okay. <coughs> so I want like, yeah. So interesting. So far in this expedition, um, has anybody seen something that made you go, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, almost everything. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> that question just made me go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> I think every day something has made me go. Hmm. <laughs> yes. I think the, the geologic formations I see on every watch make me do that. <laughs> they are unexpected, certainly. Yeah. yeah. The they jumping an enemy it. made me go. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It made me go, wow. <laughs> that, yeah, that too, big time. Well, there you have it, Misty. Thank you for tuning in to Nautilus Live. How do I? Should I? Okay. <clears throat> Never mind. Hold on. I will ask it one more second. <clears throat> so, um, I know. So we, maybe we can like t turn off the thing when we lift up and move because of the rock there. You know how you said, like, don't put just azimuth in and shoulder up and leave that the way it is, but we can't drop it because of the rocks? Raj. Yes. Cool. It works. All right, are we ready oh, to keep many cruising? Interesting rock. Yeah, let's keep let's keep going. Okay. And I will <coughs> Google the rocks some more. <laughs> Bridge, Neff. Michelle from Kentucky, welcome. Thank Could you we for step tuning two in. Two zero meters bearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> zero five five. Ooh, there's a fish. Is this yes. a little halosaur? <laughs> Hi, Paul. You can log in to NautilusLive.org, and it has all of our previous expeditions. Um, check it out. And you can also visit some of the video footage on YouTube. Ooh, not a halosaur. It was the end of the song. <laughs> Seven minute left. She was whining on about it. Welcome, India. So glad to have you. This is a cool outcrop feature. It is. Sure is. And then is that an anemone? Do we have any coins in our zoom bank? Could we zoom right over here, right to the right of the lasers? I hope that that's a feature and not just a no weird reason. rock shadow. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's like a brittle an star. Oh, wow. Nice. Just sort of working at the edge of my leash here. 
but we're gonna okay. get closer. And look at the underside of these rocks, so yellow. <clears throat> Megan, you have fans asking if you have social media that they can follow you on. What? Yeah. Um, actually, I do not have social media. <laughs> um, or I don't really use it, so I'm not, I'm not active there. Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, folks. You're letting down your fans. No, this is it. Take it all in while you got her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for, for right, asking. Jeff. Limited time offer. Could we <laughs> choose your Ooh, meters? Those are darker zero, rocks. Six. Why are those lacking sediment? Did they just get scoured by a little bit of the current? And there might be a whip. Looks like it's a sponge. Oh, it is a sponge. It's one of those, <coughs> what is it, the tulip sponges looking ones? Yeah. Ooh, and another fish. Is that a fish or is that? I think it's a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a big fish back there. One of our shark-like friends, our chimera-ish. Oh, it looks like... He's blending a little bit too much for me <laughs> <laughs> to see all of his fins. Could we zoom on the zoom? fish? Oh, the fish. Yes, of course. Oh, also, I mean, the sponges no, the are sponge, also good. Sponge too yeah. would be great. <laughs> I got ahead everything. of myself. Sorry. I'm a big fan of the sponges. So for the animals that glow, um, we just simply turn off the lights okay, so we can see it, right? We have a participant asking, um, have you ever thought about putting UV in a lights further? on the ROV? Oh, we were just talking about that. Um, that has been done on other ROVs, and maybe one day we'll do it on ours. Cool. What's that? Uh, the UV lights for sponges. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would be really cool. We've definitely done low light stuff Yeah, mm -hmm. on this vehicle. Like, had all the lights out and looked for bioluminesc bioluminescence mm -hmm. with cameras that were specially designed to detect Yeah, light. that was really cool. I like that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I mean, if we can learn something, that's great. <laughs> I'm a little bit further away, which might be why that, the normal. I like that. Mid and down off, okay. It's pretty. Ooh. Okay, go wide. And our fish <coughs> friend stayed. <laughs> He's ready for his close up. <laughs>
Okay, go for zoom. Oh, oh it's one of these with the teeth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like these. Teeth fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as smiley as the last one we saw. <laughs> and I've already forgotten what they were called. No, it wasn't hella sore, but it was something sore. <laughs> Look at all of these rocks. Can we take some of these? Some of these big ones? <laughs> <laughs> Silence. <laughs> we can't um, take the whole crest. I just need you to be a little more specific. <laughs> <laughs> like and then I'm happy to weigh in. Huge no. rocks over <laughs> here, here. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> What about that little one to the right? Sorry, your rock is important to us. <laughs> <laughs> Please try again later. <laughs> How okay. big is that one? You do. You mean the little one next to the, the little one? one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 Even I was like, that's still really big, Amber, what do you mean? Okay, so are we collecting a rock here? Could we? Sure. I mean, <laughs> all's up to you. The One ship is closer to beating let's, the last Let's get a, a zoom the ship on it first. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're set up um, we've got We've got room. Okay. Do you want to do it? Can we um, first zoom on it to make sure yeah. it's something we want? Sure. Yeah. Okay, go for Zoom. Hmm. It's actually kind of hard to tell. It might actually be quite a bit. I think oh, it's actually it might be just buried. buried. Yeah. yeah, it looks buried. Yeah. That's all I right, I don't then. think that's what we think it is. Okay. That is all right. Good to know. It's going to be like one of those cartoons where you like go to pick it up, and it's like the like left nostril of a giant sea monster. <laughs> 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 You're like, I have regrets. I woke him up. Okay, what is pelagic zone? Did I even say that correctly? Pelagic. Pelagic. Yeah, Canada. Someone in Canada um, would like to know what's the p that word in depth. <laughs> <laughs> pelagic. Pelagic zone in, in this depth. Do we know? Swimming zone. That's... <laughs> uh, it's, I don't know. it's it's part of the the open ocean. Um, I would have to look up the exact depth range that it entails, but um, do, do, do. this is a cool little rock outcrop with some feather starts. Yes, oh, that is Isn't that pretty. And it looks like this is just a little standalone. Yeah. Giant floated block. So the pelagic is, yeah, the open, and anything other than basically the seafloor and the coast, and it's divided up into three sections mm -hmm. the mesopelagic, bathypelagic, and abyssopelagic. So and that does goes that mean we're bathy 
pelagic right now? Yeah, that's right. But we're on the seafloor, so we're, we're benthic. benthic. Yeah, but we would be passing through the bathypelagic mm. to get here. But are we currently bathypelagic, or are we abyssal pelagic? The, the pelagic is is open ocean that's not seafloor um, oh. or coasts. So um, it's the water yeah. column. Benthic yeah. zone right now. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, is that a little coral? Do we have any zoom for right there? I need to stop with the telestrator again. <laughs> yep, I can give it a quick zoom. <clears throat> Go for zoom. Oh, it might be a, a black further. coral. Are these little black coral? I think so. Two little black coral. Ooh, okay. Kylie, I'm watching Mezzo pretty close. Roger. Go wide. I'm going to see if we have any plates we can drop here, too. Wow. Okay. This That's is a really, really cool feature. It is. That looks like a no. We really have, oh, no, we have two on the left. Okay. There, and one on the right. <gasps> Is there? Yeah, it's tough. Oh, okay. There. Nobody's dropped any plates. Okay, next time we get a chance, we'll do that. We're gonna drop a plate. Rock. Um, Data, can you tell me where and how many rocks we have on the vehicle? We have three rocks, all in starboard. Okay. Are th are there any in big boxes, or are they all fairly small? Uh, one is in the big box. The other two are in the small ones. Okay, but it has the one in the big bio box has been classified as a medium rock. Okay, um, Kelly, I'm going to start means. heading up. <laughs> so. Oh, it looks like you're I'm already clear. clear of it. Yeah. Awesome. That makes me happy. Yeah. That means that I want to do more exploring before we move the ship. Roger okay. that. I was, <laughs> I had a hunch. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. With with science's permission, of course. <laughs> yes. It's just taken me a long time to warm up to this watch this morning. I'm oh, so sorry. No. Gabby. I'm getting there. Gabby. On preheat. <laughs> <laughs> On preheat. That took me a while to get that one. I'm getting there. I'm so close. We can feel this, it. This rock is making me pretty happy. I just wish it was more covered in biology. So do I. <laughs> that's that's a strange something we don't usually hear from geologists. geologists. Yeah, I know. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is a very nice rock. I can't collect it though. <laughs> it's that's rather large. Like, true. That oh, is look, accurate assessment. Some crying <laughs> 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 noise. <laughs> she is learning. <laughs> Throw it on the hood. Hey yeah. now, at least I have downgraded from wanting the entire seamount. <laughs> That's true. We right, I feel like you still there. want it. You just aren't saying it as much. <laughs> <laughs> no, all that sediment can stay down. <laughs> See, the thing is, geologists like Amber and also myself, we like rocks, then biology, then sediment. <laughs> <laughs> That so is a very good way to put that. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it pretty common for geologists to study sediment? There are, I took there a are many geologists in, in the world. Undergrad. We are not we all don't the same. Talk to them. There's also there's like there's soil scientists and there's sort of a different vibe, you know. Yes. <laughs> and then there's some of us that study crypto tephra for four years. Excuse what me? is crypto? <laughs> okay, you can't just say that. Your not mouth. Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> The geologist Dogecoin? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tafra is, you know, any ejecta, anything that is coming out explosively <laughs> from a volcanic eruption. So crypto Tafra. Our <laughs> oven is hot now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these off. ripples. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, crypto tephra just means it's a layer of ash that you cannot see with the naked eye. And so you have to search through the sediment for it. 
So you go through a lot of sediment trying to find these little glass shards from a volcanic eruption. And let wow. me tell you, it is time consuming and not always fulfilling. <laughs> but it is fun when you finally do find some. So I no longer like to look at sediment or opal. Curse the opal. <laughs> I don't know, that one sedimentary environments class I took <laughs> six years ago was really fun. <laughs> I do that when I go to the beach. I sort through the sand, especially if there's like nice <laughs> grains. <laughs> <laughs> nice sometimes, what? Sometimes there's little like, uh, like olivines, like little green bits. Yeah. Oh, you, gotta, nice. you gotta sit there and you gotta sort the sand. Do you okay. want to sit with you? I feel like I have a sense for the strain and I feel like it did what it was supposed to do for us. <laughs> <laughs> it Gabby helps wants to move on. <laughs> is, it, is it time to move on, I think is what I'm asking. Yes. yes. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's move on. Bridge, huh? Could we step to zero meters bearing zero five six? Thank you. These are some nice uh, ripples. They're not quite ripples, aren't they? Well, the, I guess they are, but they're just sort of irregular. Yeah. I did a, a little bit of searching for our our friend Frank, <laughs> who asked that question a while back mm -hmm. um, about corals and spawning uh, in in the deep deep ocean or cold water corals. I am very far from being a coral expert, so I, I cannot get into much detail, but it looks like some species of cold water corals t spawn annually, and there are, or reproduce annually, and there are different reproductive mechanisms that are both sexual and asexual, um, and the dynamics of, of these kinds of events are not studied that deeply and there are so many different types of corals so it's not the same for all deep water corals but so i have a question on that line <coughs> what kind of annual cycle signals would they see down here how could you know what a year was if you lived a it might be their own time yeah. scale it might be their own time scale i'm not sure I, I, there's one article I've just been skimming a little bit in sedimenty areas um, that said, particularly for some species in the Northeast Atlantic, in the Western Atlantic, spawning usually begins in late January um, in one area and in late September in the other area. So I don't know what exactly triggers that in those particular areas. Maybe this article will get more into it, but um, but I thought that was interesting that it was somewhat regular on an annual scale. Okay, so it could be that surface. Oh, um, that that's another thing I read about that that um, temperatures, changing temperatures, are definitely impacting when corals are are spawning. I mean, that's known for um, shallow, shallow water. water for sure, but I think it changing chemistry and temperature of the ocean will affect spawning also for deep water corals based on my limited reading here. I didn't know how similar or different it was from shallow water corals. Cause yeah. I know more about, I don't know a lot about <laughs> shallow water coral reproduction, but I have more of an understanding of that when it yeah. comes to spawning events. I kind of feel like this sediment is something I'd want at the beach and just sink my feet into. <laughs> <laughs> it did 
it did kind of seem seem like that sort of sediment when we brought it up. Often I feel like I it seafloor deep deep ocean sediment sort of looks that way, and then when we bring it up, it ends up being like quite muddy and has a interesting smell. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we did collect some of this earlier, this cruise on a previous dive, and it had little shells, and it it was, yeah, it looked quite familiar to beach sediment. Kylie, how much slack does Argus have to move around with? How, um, sorry, how much slack mm -hmm. does Argus have to move around with? I don't have any. All <laughs> I can do is turn my neck, really. <laughs> I'm, I just go where the ship goes. And um, sometimes there's like layback, which is like if the ship, if we're in working in deep water like we are now, um, if the ship moves uh, pretty fast, it will get to where it's trying to go way faster than I will. And I will kind of like drag behind the ship. So we, in that case, we'd have like more payout on the winch than, um, and like I will I will gradually pull it in as I get kind of so like closer to the holder. ship again. Is this is um, a little jelly. But I have very, oh. hmm, just about zero little control over. Holder. Can we get a closer zoom? Where I am. Got it. But well, I can go up and down. Oh, I it's a whole thurian. I don't think we have to ask Gabby Yay. twice. It's <laughs> a whole <laughs> thurian. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. I know. Give us all the drama. <laughs> I love how they swim. Oh, it has like. Oh, you're so cool. Just like contracting and stretching. Very pretty. Oh, wow, Ooh. yeah, that's oh. the drama. That's a beautiful texture. Oh, wow, the Argus view. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I wonder what Emil would have to say about that. If only it was his watch still. <laughs> What's that? If only it weren't midnight. Yeah. yeah. Could I ask him, or one in, one thirty. no longer midnight. Does anyone know how sea cucumbers reproduce? Oh, that's a good question. We can, uh, we can try to figure that out. Uh, they also spawn by releasing egg and sperm into the water column. That texture. Which one in Argus? You I'm mean sorry, just in okay. the, in her? Yeah. I'm like high up, but stretched. Mary, did you collect any black coral right samples? Uh, we have, yeah, yeah. I believe some We've collected um, quite a few. In there a chat, go. they're asking, um, were there any evidence of spawning? Um, I black? am not sure. No. I don't think I was the one to process the black corals. I know we collected them. Yeah. And I was also not on watch when they were collected, so I'm mm. not completely sure. Oh. 
What does the processing look like? Did you ask me something? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, what? I, s I asked what the processing looks like. Uh, ah. Processing, uh, fairly simple. So we kind of take a bunch of pictures of what we've sampled up on deck or in the wet lab, uh, take a bunch of measurements, some observations on you know color and everything. And then we, for most biological samples, they get preserved in ethanol that then gets typically used for DNA in the future after being sent to repositories. Cool. I've heard a lot from Amber about what her samples entail, but I haven't heard much about the biology. Yes, there's no fun cracking open of biology like there is the rocks. <laughs> 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 it's a lot of just kind of describing it in measurements. I love smashing rocks. <laughs> Ken Sulak has given us an update on that fish name that I couldn't remember. Bathysaurus. Bath Ooh. Oh, that's right. So no black corals were collected during this dive, to answer your question. Our scientist ashore has also informed us that earlier uh, on this dive, we saw, or perhaps the previous watch saw, a large, dull, red-brown urchin. And it is one of the deep-sea pancake urchins. <laughs> oh. Can we get a head count on how many deep-sea creatures are pancake names? <laughs> <laughs> this is news to me. I only knew about the pancake batfish, so. Wasn't there also a pancake octopus? It's possible. Mm. Looking this that up now. Pancake octopus. There is definitely a pancake octopus. Wait, what? What? <laughs> pancake <laughs> First thing that comes up is not a real thing. <laughs> are interesting. Do we have an anemone? Can we zoom? Hmm. <laughs> About 12 centimeters? A nice anemone. Is this a pancake anemone? <laughs> it's kind of flat. It does sort of look like it has something under it that could mm -hmm. be a pancake. Yeah. Maybe a crepe? <laughs> Kylie's favorite. Oh. Umaro is crepe day. <laughs> Mange le crepe. 
Manger. Manger. I, I got it. I don't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> I think Megan does. Oui, oui, on peu. <laughs> J'ai tout dit le français. Oh, mm -hmm. that sounds wonderful. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I study French. <laughs> Je parle un peu. I speak a little. It's the worst. You like it? So for, for the, the viewer who was asking about the pelagic zone, we have a very precise um, description from our scientist ashore, uh, Ken Sulak. He says that the bathypelagic zone is generally defined as, the, as lying between 1,000 and 4,000 meters, and uh, the current dive is operating at continental rise to upper abyss depths mobile megafauna associated with the deep sea floor but drifting or swimming just above the sea floor are termed or called benthopelagic or inhabitants of the benthic boundary layer nice Where did all the rocks go? <laughs> Down below. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> Bridge, no? <laughs> Could we just step call it zero bridge zero and zero says, zero can you here? just like, take us to some place with the rocks? <laughs> 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 this simply will not do. <laughs> <laughs> we are coming up on a steeper slope, so maybe there will be more rocks. Cool. Kay. It has been kind of surprising where we're seeing them based I on the I think there's actually some over to the yeah. right, some isolated ones, because I don't see them in a herc, I mean, Argus view. Yeah, I see that. Oh, oh just there's definitely one. some stuff coming up. Is that a holotherian? <laughs> 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 
I think that's a rock. You remember the that like? No, it's okay. You remember the um? Oh, how do you describe the thing you saw at the bottom of the ocean? It was like a big slug, and it was like a periwinkle color. A and it, we kept seeing it around, and we were like, "It's the same one." What, oh yeah, it was a holothurian. I think it was just like a, a weird blobby one. one. I guess. It was I mean, it was the same one each time, <laughs> <laughs> as far as we know. Working on his portfolio, <laughs> getting his headshots. Yeah. This looks rather steep over here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice little rocky outcrop again. It's kind of. What was the speed you asked for? Oh, we were doing 0 0.3. Okay, great. Oh, did you want to pitch a plate? Uh, before we get to the slopey slope? Yeah, and before we <laughs> grab a rock and have regrets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could we also oh zoom? No. Oh, no, no, no zooms. Sorry. Ish. I was just lining up for it, too. <laughs> oh, it's in, it's in bubble now. Oh, yeah. So oh, it's video zoom. bubble. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Zooming Get on back bubble. There. Come back. There you are. <laughs> Such yeah, a cute okay, little pet pole. Grab a plate. <sighs> well, nothing really all that exciting is going on. Oh, would you like yes. me to stop the ship for that? <clears throat> uh, no. No, you want to just cruise? Oh, that's a nice cruise. perspective. I'll take a look at this. That's like this is really not on our way, though. This is a pretty serious detour. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cool like ramp. It's yeah. it looks like a ramp up to like a castle or something. It does. And I wish I could <laughs> follow it because it goes on for a while. Yeah, we could or climb like, the stairs. If we can go like back to like mountain passes, like to go around Moria. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I really think that's what might be what's <laughs> happening there. Drums. Um, but it is uh, not on the way. Oh, is the sponge on the way though? Yes, oh, the mm -hmm. sponge is on the way. Hi, friend. Hello. Now, is this a living Go for sponge zoom. or is this a dead sponge? Go cool with living. He has a brittle start. Hello, Nia. This is a branching sponge. <laughs> Sparsely branching. I am a even. sponge. <laughs> Hi there. I feel like everything is just sparsely branching now. <laughs> is that? We diluted the term. <laughs> a brittle star and Sparse a branch. Yeah. Okay, looks like go it. Ahead. Oh, Ooh, there's the fish. Our oh. friend is back. <laughs> so okay. the purpose of dropping the plate is to release weight from the ROV, correct? Yeah. That's correct. I'm gonna eat one of these. It's finally the back row that's come unhinged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're always a little unhinged and we just hide it better. <laughs> <laughs> we're loudly unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> now we know what you right. really think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this chair, though. It just should slide back, but it doesn't. <laughs> yes, the internet is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it definitely can be like that. Okay, that's going off. Whew. Let's try that one one more time. Did it dab? Yeah, that was really odd. It stayed in the last position it was in. That's really interesting. I have never seen that before. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that a Leo thing? Can you turn on porch light for me? Can you turn on porch light for me? Oof. That has a lot of glare on bubble. I'm just going to pull ahead for a second here. I know. There wasn't that much water in there. Yeah. You, you guys uh, identified a ground, a ground fault? Same, same. OK. It's the tilt motor, as, as always. Roger. Understood. <laughs> I have seen the bingo board, but I didn't get a chance to read it, and I really want to. <coughs> they have to happen twice to get crossed off. Oh, OK. I know of one that I don't really want to say out loud right now. Yes, it's the first thing that happened. And while I'm not superstitious, I'm still superstitious. <laughs> Okay, let's have it. Wait, I don't even understand what that means. Oh my God. Oh, because we say every time, don't turn off the blue button. Yeah. <laughs> as far as buttons go, <laughs> it's maybe our most famous button. The, is, do people really understand, people, I think the button button is the most, most misunderstood because I think it's widely misunderstood among pilots as well. It's. <laughs> I think it's 
easier to explain what the button button does than it is to explain the what's the situation with the blue button. I could, <laughs> yes, I can explain what the blue button is supposed to do <laughs> very easily, even more easily than the button button, because the button button is... <laughs> I was off SPL. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, it's just me having this conversation with myself. That's fine. Oops. <laughs> that feels pretty fine. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> we try. We really do. I go on SPL for the operational conversations. And our last for the person. Yeah, questions. we're most we're mostly trying to spare you all. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> okay, here I am, a pilot on SPL. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a big sediment mound with it, a fish on top? <laughs> it looks like King of the Hill. There could be rock on the other side, perhaps, like it's covering it, but we'll see in a moment. Tilt motor coming on. So I think that in principle, the blue button is a very straightforward entity, and the button button is just nonsense. <laughs> Tilt motor coming off. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it should be very easy to explain the blue button as it is intended. Its current state, however, is a little bit more nebulous. So to clarify, there are two buttons, and one of them is blue. And, the other <laughs> and one, one of them is a button. button. <laughs> God. Oh, I s still feel a little fuzzy on what the blue button is. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> okay, should I actually explain what the blue button is supposed to do right yeah, now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. so the blue button is a button on the <laughs> controller for the craft arm. And what this button does is when you press it, it opens up a solenoid valve, which is essentially like an on-off switch in the land of hydraulics. Um, it opens up hydraulics to the arm. So once the blue button has been pressed, and the reason we call it a blue button is it has a blue LED on it, so you can just like look down and see, are the hydraulics to the arm live? Um, and the cool thing about this is that um, it's a normally closed solenoid, which means that if we lose power to the arm, um, then the solenoid closes, which means that there's no more live hydraulics to the arm. So it's sort of like a dead man switch um, that uh, keeps, keeps people operating the arm and the arm itself and the vehicle safe um, in, the in the event of power loss to the DC power on the arm. So that's what the blue button does. And when we press the blue button, the arm is live. It can do things. It can pick up samples. It can also do damage if there's issues to the electronics, which there have been this cruise. Um, so that should get rid of some of the mystery. Currently, the reason the blue button is so mysterious is because we have spoofed it. So it's a switch, um, and it has to detect certain, um, in, in order for the arm to go live, it has to the switch has to work as intended. Current has to be detected through the solenoid. Um, right now, we don't have the proper solenoid in there. Um, we ran out of spares when one of them stopped working, basically. Um, actually, when a power supply stopped working. It gets more complicated. However, we've had to spoof the switch. We'd have to pretend that the switch is working when it's working a little differently than it used to. So blue button's always on right now to spoof the switch, to trick the arm into working. We have hotwired the arm. Um, so the problem is, if you turn off the blue button right now at the wrong time, the arm thinks it's working when it's not working, and it freaks out. So we try not to turn off the blue button, which is why we're constantly reminding each other not to turn off the blue button. And I've probably lost everybody at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but now you sort of get a sense of why we're always talking about the blue button. In fact, it's really the hydraulic switch to the arm and it does nothing more or less than that. <laughs> and what does the button button do? The button button... Enables the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> it is the button that allows us to use auto, auto XY, auto head, and auto depth buttons. 
on the screen. We can still use those autos on the joy box whether or not the button button is on. But in order to use them on the screen, you need to have pressed the button button. And it makes very little sense to anyone who didn't, like, hasn't dug into the actual source code. <laughs> <laughs> but here it is. Here we are. And I think there is another vehicle that has it too. And it's just comical to go to another system and see another button button. But, like, at some point, somebody's going to get rid of it, but on neither system has anybody attempted to get rid of it yet. How'd I do? I followed. Excellent. Oh, I feel yeah. very nice job. in my button knowledge now. <laughs> knowledge of all the buttons. I now know more about buttons. Internet, how do you <laughs> feel about the blue button now? <laughs> Is it still so mysterious? They say thank you for it. It's just an on-off switch. Oh, they, they liked it. Oh, great. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> and the communications person is here. <laughs> hey, send me your questions. Send us some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> send us some so biology. we're looking at carbonates now? Yes. That sounded very disappointed, <laughs> Amber. I am I very disappointed. <laughs> no. I, would I be wrong seven? if I said that like carbonate is like compacted sediment? Or is that... You would not be wrong. Out? It is compacted uh, sediment of this type. Because this, uh, okay. this marine snow is very uh, calcareous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very Describe calcium cal rich. Oh, Roger. Okay. All the little calcium carbonate shells oh. and everything. So yes, very much out of my depth. There's a CCD joke in there somewhere, Amber. Yes, yes, there <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, there he is again. Oh my gosh, our friend. <laughs> He's here again. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a long-standing joke, isn't it? What's his name? Um, Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob. <laughs> Go for Zoom. It's a holotherian. Yeah, yeah, but isn't it a special kind? He was like the um, identification picture. Oh, one, wasn't right? it a handsome otherian? Oh, yeah. Handsome otherian? <laughs> no, you're making that up. I'm no, not no. making it up. It's a little <laughs> off, <laughs> but like, yes. <laughs> okay, go wide. So pretty. I'm going to refine it. Yeah, because he was I'm like the ID you. picture. Yeah, yeah. Like, that is what I'm saying, though. It, it was, was like it definitely had handsome in there somewhere. <laughs> I think it was like I can't tell I'll whether they're pulling your leg. No, or I'm not pulling your leg. I'm completely serious. <laughs> I, I had pulled it up. Hands, yeah. Hands, I just hand don't know. I don't Senothuria. know what to believe anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, what what computer do you have? Uh, <laughs> if you look at capture, look at capture. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> Hanson, Hanson Otheria. Hanson Otheria, yeah. that's handsome. what I was saying. It's Hanson Otheria. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you're wrong. Beauty's in the eye of reading the holder. Hanson Otheria. <laughs> Spelling. Okay, right. Hanson Otheria. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of conversations we have at 2 a.m. Oh. You know, I really feel like the odds are stacked against us ever having a normal conversation. Cause they really are. <laughs> Like but always the internet on this thinks watch. that we're the best watch. <laughs> so at 2 p.m. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, internet. We also believe that we are the best watch. Yes, we do. <laughs> no, you're. This is the right move. I I needed a good. I needed somebody to set a good example. <laughs> And just to recap, so you all know what's happening, we are exploring um, on the western ridge of an unnamed guillot northwest of Kingman Reef, outside of the Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monument. So we started off at 3,036 meters, traveling upslope to about 1,039 meters, um, crossing over some pretty cool summits, turrets, canyons, and moving through some cool currents. So send us your questions. Let us know what you're wondering about or your curiosities. We have a very interesting comment from our scientist ashore, uh, Ken Sulak. 
he says that the small grayish tadpole shaped fish that swam rapidly through the frame is the abyssal op ophidoid a acanthonus armatus its bulbous skull is full of light ion fluid for buoyancy purposes and ken believes that the fluid ion is lithium chloride this fish has the smallest brain relative to body size of any fish species but it has enormous semicircular canals that sense body orientation wow that's really interesting and he says that when not startled by an ROV, the fish normally drifts passively, head down or oblique. It makes short descents to the substrate to snap up benthic in faunal prey, ingesting sediment as well. Thank you for that description. Very cool. Mm -hmm. The laser points that you see on the cam are 10 centimeters apart. Is that a tripod fish right there? Lots of ripple marks in the sediment. I see rocks. No, I see a cliff. <laughs> Welcome, Canada. Thank you for tuning in to Nautilus Live. Hey, buttonologist Gabby, <laughs> can we do a zoom on some of these fish up here? There are fish up here? Yes, there are. Okay. The first one I don't see anymore, so it might not have been real, but there is one that's in the <laughs> sediment. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go look at this one. Did you like the name I gave for you? <laughs> <laughs> There totally is another fish. I see him again. A little fishy. Go for zoom. Oh. This fish is not a camera fish. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like absolutely static and facing away. <laughs> if he Pretty stays much. very still, maybe he might leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Nope. We're it's not going to be like now. that. <laughs> oh, rats. I scared him. Sorry. Don't apologize to us. Apologize to him. <laughs> oh, what is this line? Is this literally the divide of, of slope? Oh, wow. Steeper slope to the right, less steep to the left. It's going straight up. Yeah, that makes sense looking at our contours cool and heading. Like little like dip. Yeah. It right? really like, is. Like a ravine or something. I like see. look in sonar. Look in um Herc Mezzo. The right oh. hand mezzo. You can see what the shape of the the train actually is. 
That actually is really cool. This must be our ground truthing our contour line. Ryan, you want to put the um, either the mes <coughs> yeah, put the mezzo up. Yeah, that's a really interesting view. That would be cool to show. Oh yeah! Wow. It's one of the PCs. I think I believe. Oh, sonar, that one. Wow. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really dramatic uh, sonar view of this change. Yeah, it like it's funny. It doesn't like on this on the video. It just like doesn't look dramatic at all. <laughs> Could we step three zero meters bearing zero? I think we have seven. an urchin, no, an enemy off to the left, uh, and then Kylie, maybe a crap to, zero to the right. Seven. Zero five seven? One degree of bearing. Noted. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, I can't even, s it's hard to tell even what the is that thing one's says. Burning <laughs> I, your goal is set at zero, at zero five seven. Mm -hmm. It is now, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, well, like, do you think we can get a zoom what? on this <laughs> little this little guy? Zoom? Yeah, zoom on this little guy. Oops. Oh. Is it crab? Hello. Go for zoom. It's moving. Aww. It's a carrier wow. crab and a Yes. Oh, does he have a little anemone on the back or yes, no? Yes, definitely. I can see it, right? Is it? Or is that just the bulbous oh, back just, end? Oh, maybe you're right. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. Thought I saw tentacles. I think it might be an anemone. Yeah, I was like, there might be tentacles down at the bottom. I don't know. Oh, that's a good zoom. That's a nice focus. Yeah, no, that is. And it's, it's one of those weird anemones. Look, there... You see there's yeah. like one, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Definitely not hitting the zoom. I'm sorry. Are you able to get any good captures off yeah, of this? Oh, great. yeah. We got yeah, some yeah, yeah. good ones. That Thank was you. nice. Um, I have a qu okay, I have go ahead. question. <coughs> Do you all think the sediment on this side is more cooperative than yep, the previous site? Yeah. is there, but yeah, the deck is not. Um, they mm. say it seems mm. like it doesn't easily disturb the ROV's thruster. Why <laughs> is that? I'll have to defer to the pilots for that one, but I think it's because we haven't been trying to touch down. Mm. Yeah. What was the question? It's all strategy, huh? They're asking about the sediment. Is this sediment over here more cooperative than the last dive? Oh, interesting question. Uh, say again. Was that for me? Um, the question from the viewers are, is if the sediment is more cooperative than it, on previous dives. It seems like it is. Um, but also, uh, we've, we're sort of not that close to it, I guess, because the terrain is pretty uniform. Uh, so I don't know. I we haven't really been pushing our luck with the sediment, but I think <laughs> my sense is that it's more cooperative. I like that term. I like that word for it. Mm -hmm. I have a question. We use the word salvo a lot. Yeah. What's a salvo? Video. Pop quiz. Video. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just I just gave Ryan a problem to solve separately. Oh, okay. Ryan's solving a camera problem. Um, Kylie then? <laughs> um, uh, well, I don't know why it's called that, and I don't, I, I, I'm sure there's actually a better video answer, but basically we hit the salvo. There's a few preset settings for um, the monitors that the that we all use in here, um, and we have like one for diving, one for sampling, and Can one for launching and recovering. What? Just come up a little. Yes, of course. Raj. So it's like a shortcut for getting the cameras in view that are um, the most useful for that operation. It, ba it basically means burst, um, and the word itself, oh. it just refers to a sudden act or series of acts happening all at the same time. Oh, okay. It's more commonly used 
in in other contexts like I, I know in like military contexts based on what I'm seeing here but we use it just to describe like a sudden act one button releasing several different screens or settings that makes perfect sense is that like the is it <coughs> I think is that the etymology like of, of the word like to like burst is that like the origin um that's like the general definition of oh, yeah. like of like how it, it usually is used um but the etymology um because i didn't know that at all sounds yeah. like i can't think of the word off the top of it my head it comes from italian and french originally latin um meaning oh the latin means healthy ah oh like salve yeah that makes sense okay a salve but um Thank you. I didn't know that. I had no idea. Ooh, okay. Allosaur? Salute is another variation. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. So we know that the green lasers are 10 centimeters apart, and it's like for the purposes of identifying uh, measurement in some yes. way. Other than that, like, do you utilize the lasers for any other purpose? We're going to do a switch of pilots here. Sounds good. I think mostly measurement. Got it. Interesting lighting on our sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Give eyes to some of them. Is that an enemy up in that left corner? Is that a holothurian or an anemone? I think it's an anemone. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was an anemone, but didn't want to get my hopes up. Looks Oops. very anemone. Hairy and or spiny. <laughs> Possibly both. Video zoomed. An anemone. You know Monster from uh, Sesame Street? The one that plays the drums? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Muppets and not Sesame Street? It's the Muppets. Yeah, 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 yes, I know who yeah, you're talking about. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. They All the critters have Muppet energy when you get the lasers on them, so they look like eyes. <laughs> Um, Brandy, did you s did you ask us earlier um, if we use the lasers for anything other than sizing, scaling? Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. And they do. Um, somebody just posted. Um, can the green lasers be hazardous um, to the animals? Um, I'm not sure. <coughs> That's a good question. It's interesting because not only do we know like lasers and eyeballs are a bad time, but like but a lot of the stuff's blind, right? These things, and the, it's not just that; it's like it's never seen light before, yeah, at all, yeah. <laughs> right? So like, who's who's to say? 
I think a lot of them are also blind. Yeah, most of them are blind or don't have eyes. So that's also, I think, part of why some of them don't react to us right away. Yeah. It has to be like a change in water movement, I think, Yeah. for some of them. Can they hear? That's a great question. I don't know. The ripples are really nice around. Is there a crinoid or something? Uh, he hasn't been doing too much in the way of heading changes. It's been pretty solid. He's in a couple, but we've been like right at zero nine zero zero eight seven. Why is something? Raj. Yeah, no, we, and we've been holding solidly. I haven't been letting the steps run out, uh, but we've been holding station pretty solid. <coughs> um, Gabby, it's when you have time. There's like a, a gauge check due soon. I I was doing them on, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I got off a different schedule and never told you about it. S sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one of those sponges up ahead. Looks like there's something. I will ask you to tell us. Maybe a that yellow one as oh, well. Oh, I see it. I see it. I see it. Is there something reddish ahead, or is that just like? I think there's something yellowish off to the left, but oh, I yeah. don't see anything reddish. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw a shrimp. Maybe, maybe that's what it was red. What I'm seeing is like moving with the camera, so I think it's like... It's like a flare? A yeah, a flare yeah. of some kind. Yeah. Would like it be that. possible yeah. to zoom over here to the left? Sure. Uh, Science, do we want to spend a little time in this sort of outcrop area, or shall I press us forward? W we can keep moving on. Right. Yeah. We'll just take little zooms as we can. Okay. Video zoom. This is a yellow sponge. Oh, it's oh. a nice one. Hmm. Oh, that is a nice wider yellow wider one. Very I'm pretty. Gonna, um, I'm going to try to get closer. It looks kind of like the one that was sampled on the last dive, but different color. Oh, maybe. I was going to call it SpongeBob. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> we've started that, have we? At least there's not a sea star next to it. I mean, I think it's the first yellow one I've Probably. seen on watch. Okay, go ahead and so move closer. I feel like I have to say it once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've found SpongeBob. Where's Squidward and where's Patrick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if we ever do see a squirrel in a um, space astronaut, astronaut suit. <laughs> Uh, I think we can all run for the hills. <laughs> I think it means we need to go to bed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy also does, like, she's really good at karate, so <laughs> I forgot about that. We should run anyway. Memory unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is a cool feature. It is a really cool feature. I saw something down Whoa. a little bit below us that looked like it could have been like a flow type bubble that had like Ooh. collapsed. Yeah. Did any of you uh, official geologists see that or? Where was where was it? It, uh, it would have been just below us now. Kind of like what we're seeing right at the center middle of, of the screen. Bottom. Yeah, similar, but like a little bit more, rather than being overhung, it was like bowl shaped. This is so cool. Yeah, a lot of, if we're seeing um, uh, lava flows or sheet flows or pillow tubes, things like that, they're going to cool on the outside first mm -hmm. and then keep flowing on the inside. So there can be kind of weak spots where Thank you. the inside is maybe a bit more hollow where the, the lava has flown further down so they can break through the top and have these kind of holes. Oh, the Argus view is really cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah.
think there's maybe an interesting layer. Yeah. In there. It does. Video zoom. Oh, wow. Yeah. Get that. Come wide. Oh, there's another one of those fish. Nice. Amber, you would be like a great hunter. <laughs> right, she has an eye. Yeah. Oh, what, what just... Did that you was see the that? fish. That was yeah, the fish? Was oh, fish. I thought we, there, there was another fish at the bottom. I thought you were talking about that. Oh, one. wow, look at this feature here. Can you um, push in on video for me? Like a half zoom, maybe? Whoa. And there's the fish. Wow. This layer is very distinct. Mm -hmm. We've got a sponge. Okay, come on. Yeah, fracture. I am not in my autos. Sure. Okay. I'm going for that thing popping out of the rock up there, so I had I saw it first. What's this little guy? Oh. Oh. Is that an anemone? Uh, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, looks like Some it. Some sort. That botryoidal texture too. Yeah. All the grapes. Wow. This is a great, great view. I'm not in autos. But I'll do it right now. Resetting DVL the cursor. This done. inputs okay come wide let's keep going got to go got to go got to go oh that's a great angle mm-hmm talking about angular rocks <laughs> 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 look at the Argus yeah, yeah. It's really Ooh. dramatic. Like it drops off onto a cliff, kind of, over to the right. Yeah, we're like on top of a little ridge. 
that this is a cold alert system. Now, which direction is going upslope? Would that be to the right or to the left? Straight, straight ahead. Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> According to our contours, it's straight ahead. Um, but it, like I'm on a spine of it, like a ridge. So yeah, like it looks like there's a really slight way. ridge that we're this over. Is but uphill. It, it, yeah. The okay. contours don't make it look nearly as dramatic as the visual does. Yeah, so, so that's then, sloping down. Yeah, yeah, so it probably slumped to the right. And that's why you've got more of a cliff over there. That also seems like it's sloping down. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting, yeah. It's a great a sledding hill. That, yeah. But then, oh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Very I'm back here making lots of hand gestures so I don't know if anybody can see it. Gesticulating. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing the wave? <laughs> <laughs> We're revisiting our Zoidberg dance. Oh, crinoid. Dunday. Oh, I see it. Video zoom. Has brittle star Ooh. associates. That's so nice. I think there's also an unstocked crinoid on this crinoid. Yeah, it's like right behind oh. there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just sort of chilling out. Oh, that's a good view. Nice. Could we step Come three on. zero meters bearing zero five Very eight? Cool. <laughs> Good step, buddy. Is that a holothurian? No, no that's our fish, fish friend. I have a couple of times, um, just recently on the anemone, okay. but um, cool. okay, sounds good. Well, um, we're still going one five seven. Oh, zero five seven, right? Uh, we just switched to zero five eight. <laughs> Keep you on your toes over there. <laughs> <laughs> Point three, yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Welcome, Misty from Australia. She'd like to know um, the sediment and rock layers that we're looking at. Would you all consider this to be unusual? It looks unusual to me. I think it's. I think it's unusual for some of us for what we usually look at but I don't think it's, I think it's necessarily for unusual <laughs> for this kind of setting, yeah. Mm. Like we're, we're very accustomed to looking at basalt. Not covered by calcium carbonate. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, feral manganese crust. 
I am a very uh, land-based geologist, so this is all new f and interesting and unusual features for me. Yeah. But for the seamounts, this is probably pretty typical. So it takes a lot of uh, time and processing before things that have been collected are identified as actually new or unexplored, correct? I think that goes more towards the biology end of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can sense. take quite a bit of looking at it, making sure you have enough collections to determine if it is something new. Also these, some of these especially the octocorals down here, they can look kind of different from each other, but still be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, some of things. Or just having very subtle differences that mm -hmm. will also make it hard so they can look similar, but be different <laughs> at the same time. So yes, it does take a while. <laughs> So is it official that this is our absolute last dive of this expedition? Um, that that seems to be the plan. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, but we should have one more watch, most likely. Hello, Mr. Shrimp. So. There's one more opportunity to hurry. tune in. Monsieur Carvette. Mm. <laughs> you know, when we saw that, there was a really big shrimp we saw yesterday. I thought it was a lobster. Was it the one with the crazy legs? Yeah, he was a big boy. I remember <laughs> that one. That one was crazy. <laughs> big guy. Are these the same shrimp that, like, we eat? <laughs> I don't know. The ones that are, like, way down here? I don't know. Um, probably the shrimp you eat came from a, a farm. Oh. But are you you're wanting to know if it's the same species? I what think there's I a lot of different species of shrimp that people uh, eat and farm. I don't think that this is the same one. It seems an impractical fishing depth. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when <laughs> one at a time, <laughs> yeah. they're always quite solitary. <laughs> well, that's why I'm asking because it seems like if you were gonna try to like catch these guys, this would not be the way to do it. Raj, maybe like the most expensive <laughs> shrimp to eat. Yeah, you, you you can only fish it with the slurp. <laughs> these are my actual <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> we call well, it. Maybe if you ask, it's Kylie like slurp to table. <laughs> What's that? Uh, if you ask Kylie and Gabby nicely, maybe they'll slurp one for you, and you can try and cook it up. Mm -hmm. Honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's weirder experiments that we can do. <laughs> Just chase them around. Come here, buddy. <laughs> There's nothing, I have a feeling there's like nothing to look at on the right of this. Like if I go, I see a little ridge over there. I guess I could center myself up. <sighs> Copy that. Five? Thank you all for sharing so much love for the 12 to 4 watch mm -hmm. we definitely appreciate it, it was like drop that off. is quite the cliff yeah 
I don't know how steep it goes over. I just can't see over it just yet. Pilot, do you mind if I use uh, monitor three, lower left, picture-in-picture uh, picture for 4K for a second? Oh, yeah. Amber, with the rock samples from the last dive, did you find anything interesting from the rocks collected, like sedimentary layer rock that was much softer? And what did it seem like it might have been composed of? Ah, uh, so yes, they were interesting, but no, I did not crack any of the ones from the last dive open. Mm. We're only really breaking opening open the rocks that I'm going to be subsampling for. The rest are going to be going straight over to the repository, and they will be cut open there and characterized. But um, the undersides of lots of the rocks from the last dive showed uh, all of the sand grains and all of the pebbles that they're comprised of. So, yes, very sedimentary. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that my contours inadequately display this terrain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I really agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to uh, survey this tomorrow. What What is the contours um, suggest that our slope is? Uh, I mean, we're honestly we're at a less steep slope than we have been. Oh, crinoid. It's. Uh, oh yeah. 50 meter rise over a nearly 200 meter run. 50 over 194. And upslope is still going straight ahead, correct? And not off to the right? Straight or the ahead. Left? Right. Uh, right. I mean, there's like some slight, some slight curvature, but nothing that would suggest anything <laughs> as dramatic as we're seeing. Hmm. Yeah. That seems looks quite like strange. I'm going to have some fun when I try uh, plotting all this up <laughs> it's a, a 26 percent grade where we are 26 okay. according to the contours huh. versus our what was it 97 percent yes. <laughs> was that yesterday yeah yeah oh my goodness I know was it that yeah. seems so long ago it was two shifts ago though I think it was the last midnight one. Video zoom. I see a comment about April Fool's Day. Are we really that close to April? Yeah. Is it the 29th? Uh, no, it is not the 29th. Now. It's going to be 30th. Gosh, I feel like it was the 29th like now, for like yeah. three days, and now it's the 30th. Oh, <laughs> so Friday not? Is the first. So is that a brittle star and not a crinoid? I don't know. Or is that a feather star? It might be a different kind of star. Ah, OK. Maybe I try again from the other side. I was just looking at shrimp. I'm going to do a half three quarter zoom. Yeah, that's one of the Brasingids. Oh. Okay, punch in. All right, we are just about right on top of waypoint three here. Nice. Okay. We have arrived. So that is a brittle star crinoid. Neither. We're saying Brasingid star? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brasinga. Interesting. Okay, come wide. <laughs> uh, science. Yeah. Do we have a strategic approach for waypoint four that we want to take. <coughs> um, it looks fairly regular. Where I think we can go roughly straight towards it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to maybe uh, follow zoom this little here and then see if we get any cool terraces in this really steep area? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. And um, where your cursor is, just a little bit further up, like uh, a little bit more up. Let's like take that route rather than the valley, more of the ridge than the valley right, there. So sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, we can do that. Cool. Could we step three zero meters bearing zero five two? Arc, we're going to zero five two. Roger. I have a question for you, pilot. Um, hold on one second, Randy. No problem. Um, okay, so we're going to continue going sort of on this heading. I've got Argus pointed the direction we're going to go. If it were me, I would actually be on the face, facing it. Um, that's where you're most likely to find the critters, and it also just happens to be in the middle of the screen, too. Usually it's nice to be on the margins there. Okay, Is that what you were thinking, too? Yeah, yeah, I just didn't want to do it without permission. <laughs> really, I was like, I don't want to go down there if it's dangerous. <laughs> and no, it's, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. You can just float up out of it. Remember, you can always zero Z bias, and it'll get you out of a lot of stuff, okay. especially with having dropped that plate. It's funny, like, like being on the sides of um, like sharp terrain like this does feel kind of hairy. Yeah. Um, and I don't. I think you you'll get you'll get used to it very quickly. It actually felt like when you're walking on a wall yeah, as a kid. Yeah, totally. And you're like, oh, it's kind of high up. I didn't realize it was gonna get bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'll that sort of wears off after a little while, somewhat. Uh, looking at the mezzo, are we thinking this is like a 25 meter cliff feature? Does that seem... Um, which mezzo and are you talking about 25 meters high or where... Uh, from, yeah, 25 meters from like where we're seeing the bottom up. Uh, I guess we're... I'm trying to just gauge it based on like you can see the cliff and then it sort of did this right angle and I was thinking that might be the ground beneath us, but... I'm just trying to get a feel I for what the terrain is. I don't quite understand what you're saying. Um, how big do you think the cliff is? Oh. How, how tall how do I? Oh, yeah. how tall do I think the one right underneath us is? Yeah. Um, it looks like. Yeah, tw 15, 20 meters could be it. Uh, like, she's pretty close to the bottom. She's ten she's meters like off the bottom. And yeah, maybe it's only 10 meters tall. Okay. I feel like I'm going to have to start coming up now. Raj. Like it's up. Now it's up. Yeah. You see that? Just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, um, like I was going to, I was going to face port and yeah. watch that, but yeah. now I, I feel like I've got a new wall to look at. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Totally. <laughs> I <Okay>. agree. <laughs> It's like the bottom of Bikini Bottom, you know, when he's down <laughs> in the... It's like, we got to go up. We got to take the bus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, just follow the train. Okay. Whatever looks interesting. Okay. Just remembering that, like, your escape route sort of changes if you're... you got stuff all around you. It's more up in okay. this case. <laughs> okay. And, like, it is really up because you know where the rim of this is. Like, you don't have any shadows in your sonar. Right. Um, everything just sort of rolls up. Okay. I'll just follow this, just follow this forward in the direction we're going. And we're not like moving the ship uber fast. So we've got time. Yeah, absolutely. I 
The two green lasers for pointing um, are, are for measurement and it's a standard measurement that they utilize. It can be fixed, but this is the way that they use them. And they are 10 centimeters apart. Indeed. Sorry, Brandy, what was your um, question? Oh, um, it was asked, do pilots sometimes suffer from spatial disorientation like plane pilots, or is it not a thing? I didn't know that that's a thing that, um, like airplane pilots. Me neither. But I don't, I'm, I don't fly planes. What Me neither. What does that mean, spatial disorientation? <laughs> Could we get a zoom over to the left of the lasers? Where about? Oh, yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, Thank either you. a crinoid or a star. Okay, give me a second and get over there. Um, I get, I'll definitely get some types of, some disorientation sometimes based on the fact that we're flying off of flat screens. So mm -hmm. if like the terrain is extremely like three dimensional, especially when there's um, like a cliff face that we're navigating, I can sometimes feel like it's coming out at me when it's actually receding into the screen. Mm. Um, and there's like sort of like issues around just driving off of a flat screen that can be quite disorienting. Video um, zoom. Looks Ooh. like another person did. Mm. Yeah, it can happen. Um, we don't we don't have a vehicle that moves <laughs> that that has any pitch authority, so there isn't really a. There isn't really a tendency to think we're going up when we're going down or anything like that. Got it. That's good, at least. <laughs> oh, that's a nice zoom. Oh, yeah, that is. That's beautiful. Come wide. Pilots, are we happy with the amount of layback we've got on right now, or should I give you a chance to maybe catch up a bit? Um, are things going to get steeper? They are, but not immediately, according to my contours, which are... Okay. Um, science, are you guys happy like exploring this as the vehicles settle out, or do you want to press forward and make up time? What's on your, what's on your minds? I'd um, like to collect a rock. Oh, great. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Yeah, can Say we? Say again? Sorry? I'd like to look around this area that's a little bit to the right okay. uh, for a rock. Okay. I guess that's our answer then. <laughs> okay. We are rock rich right now. I will uh, leave yeah. the ship where it is for the time being. So Angular. I see like an angular one. You see <laughs> it? It looks like a V. I do not see it. Straight in front. Oh, I oh, think center, I see it. center camera. Right yeah, towards the bottom of the screen. It sort of looks like a comic book diamond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's to the. It's it's a. Uh, the lasers are on it now. Oh. Oh, oh, that's pretty big. I I don't think you're supposed to collect something that big for me. Wow, look at you, Amber. I I know. I'm trying to be good. <laughs> strange. I'm trying wow. to be good. Um, this. So when we when you find a rock, mm -hmm. um, Amber will be. We're sort of at the mercy of the swing of Argus, yes, so we'll okay. want to like pick one and kind of make run. it happen. Um, okay, it's not too rushed. Mm -hmm. It's just you know. All right, I will you keep know. my eyes peeled. <laughs> are all these rock formations created for actually? Lava flows? Are we able to go to the right here, or is that? That should actually. be fine. Like forward of this, like in this direction. I think it's actually under us now. Oh, so you I meant like one right else. there. Okay, yeah. I thought you meant. All right, Roger. Sorry. No, I interpret it as um, look in that direction, not um, 
there's the thing right there I like. <laughs> my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. It's all good. This is this looks like a pretty nice little rubbly area. So Okay, then What do you think, Amber? Hmm? Are you seeing what you like? What? Ah. Can I go? Not right here. Okay, I'm gonna go forward. Look. Yeah, go for it. The ones I like are still too big. <laughs> and do you think these are created from lava flows or ground upheavals? <laughs> I'll have to come back to that. I have to. <laughs> I I have to give that one a little bit of of my what brain about power. That one? I don't like that one. <laughs> what about that one? I don't like that one either. Yeah. How about that one? That one's okay. So are we trying to move up this before finding Iraq? Not up all of it, just to get up basically coins in the zoom bank. Okay. The sample, yeah, sample bank and zoom bank withdraw on the same account. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all good. So I shouldn't try and look right here? Should I nope. wait a bit? This is a fine place. Yeah. Okay, We're can we look at the, the that rock right there? Yeah. To the kind of lower left? If if um, Argus, or if if Herc is in the top of the Argus screen, then you have your accounts going up. Oh. Safe. And if Ar if Herc is losing out of the bottom of the picture, we're we're empty. We're in de deficit. Ah, oh, okay. You Good to know. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I am sorry. I never properly explained that. You probably actually did, but it takes me a few times to remember something. <laughs> So that's probably a good 15 centimeter, I think. Where are you looking? Can you circle that, that rock to the right of the lasers? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm just trying to get, is that close enough? No. Is that close enough? Possibly. Ugh, spinning. <laughs> okay. Who put stick rock there? And give yourself auto head. There you go. All right, I think I can come back to this now, Brandy. Yeah. What was this about ground upheavals? Yeah, um, let's see here what the question was. Um, they wanted to know, are all of the rock formations created from lava flows rather, rather than ground upheavals? Uh, so, a lot of this area, all the original formations are lava flows. Excuse me, wanna, what zoom box would this be in? Uh, yeah, can we get a zoom? Oh yeah, yeah we should get a d zoom before we disturb it. Okay, video zoom. I'm full right on the pan and tilt, so that's... Yep, that's fine. Okay. Alright, I got it. Okay. Oh. And come Thank wide. you. Um, what box would this go in? Um, starboard C. Roger, starboard C. There's a little jelly.
turn porch on. Oh, it is on. Okay, you can give me a zoom. Can we do a 360? Yes, we can. Uh, Data, what box was this going into? Starboard C. All right. It has potential. I'm good with it. Could also break open and be completely altered inside. It will be a toss up, but it will be good to see. <laughs> Whatever it tells us, it'll tell us something useful. So. Yes, either way. We'll have to let the internet know later if this turns out to be a big piece of crust of not or not. Go for it. Roger, I just hit the wrong button. Um, coming out. Oh. <laughs> it's not a touch screen, is it? No, I, I can get the camera for you. That's OK, I got okay. it. This is a question for someone in the audience. They say, since the weight of a rock is determined by composition rather than size, does the arm give the operator a sense of weight? And no. Okay. It does not. If it does not fit in C, you can go ahead for F. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's a little too wide. Well, it might just be the angle <laughs> of the dangle. Is manganese softer than lava? Ah, good question. It's kind of like playing soccer. I know. <laughs> I'd love I it a bit. bit. That would depend on the lava. Mm -hmm. Some, some lava is very crumbly and friable. Some is very solid. And I don't have enough experience with the ferro manganese Okay, it's going to go in F. So I don't good. want it to get stuck okay. and then not be able to close the box. Most ferro manganese crust okay. That would be, be a very bad thing. Is it pretty light or is it pretty dense? Dive salvo. I, I don't ever hold such a solid, large piece of it. It's usually just a kind of crust, that I, so it's hard for me to say, actually. But I've definitely encountered very fragile lava and very solid lava, so. Oh. <laughs> Good call. You can't do the thing. Otherwise, we get a automatic judo chop. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> Just no. Just keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Was that just to how you? How yeah, in the thing, in the in the gauge. <laughs> just bumping around. Cool, cool, cool. I think it. Yep. So I've got a oh, little yep. update on the crust. The density of the crust is usually about 1.3 grams per centimeter cubed. So it is not all that dense. So our uh, volcanic rocks should be heavier. But since the arm can't actually give us any determination of the weight, that doesn't help us until we bring it up to the lab, mm -hmm. pick them up and see if physically if they uh, feel heavy in our arms or not. <laughs> Yeah, so there is actually, um, now that I'm done, uh, there's a little bit more to that story of oh. whether you could feel 
um, how heavy the rock is. So in theory, um, this particular controller has force feedback on it and you should be able to get a little bit of a, a sense of um, how hard you're gripping and uh, how heavy things are and where the arm is at. However, um, the system doesn't work quite as well as you might like it's not perfect and it doesn't really do what we need and it doesn't make our jobs easier or better it actually makes them harder oh. um so it's got better uses than for sampling and trying to gauge how heavy a rock is um <laughs> so yeah it's not optimal it exists as an option but it's not optimal um and so we don't use it okay good to know yeah the capacity is there the technology is there it's just this particular implementation does not end up working for the way we want to use it. <laughs> so, uh, Nia, what are what are our current steps right now, or what what have we been? Um, I just called in a 30 meter step, uh, bearing 052, so that will bring us. Let me zoom out on high back a little bit. Uh, that heading will bring us up this way. Perfect. To the extent of this ridge that we talked about. Um, I've been doing 30 meter steps kind of through this. Yep area that we haven't been spending too much time or seeing too much biology uh, and it seems like that's been working because we can still kind of stop and check things out if we want to but we're like mostly cruising um, and then I'm hoping that once we get into these steeper areas maybe we'll have some time to check them out if it's still our watch at that time sounds great Raj. <laughs> How many engineers? Makes sense. It would it would feel more appropriate if you guys got like gaming chairs. I think. <laughs> no. We already use. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me either. Oh, I relate to that. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> Put yourself on SPL. You're on. I love that game. I do too, j mostly because of the sassiness of the yeah of the voice running the show. But um, like generally speaking, you don't need much in the way of game mechanics to play that game. Mm -hmm. And I still like get like halfway through and can't get fast from one place to another, and can't you know do you know I can solve yeah. the problems, but I can't do the thing. No, yeah, I, I what game are we talking no about? Portal. Mechanics. Oh. I have not played. It's very, a, very classic. I like playing that as like a, like a with a with another with a friend. Oh yeah. yeah. But if you you know you can work through some conflict issues. That <laughs> 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 came together really. I'll, I'll play like Super Smash Bros with my friends, but I like lose myself on the screen a lot. Yeah. I just don't have like I didn't play video games as a kid, and I yeah. just don't have the instincts for it. I can't track visually that many things. Yeah, and I can't move very fast. Yeah. And yeah. I can't tag this item and then tag that item before the thing smashes me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me too. It's, it, yeah. It's hard because then, like, you play with other people who have been playing for, mm. you know, yeah. like two hours a day for like 20 years. And yeah. you're like, <laughs> oh, we're never going to be on the same train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Like, this is not. So, like, I feel like we get this question a lot. Like, do you, do you play a lot of video games? And I certainly don't think it hurts if you play a lot of video games, mm. but I also don't. Can we know zoom on that this it's a setback thing? if you don't. 
video like zoom. Totally different. I yeah, I don't thurian. feel like it is. Like, yep, whole thurian. I really feel like. Um, oh, that's oh that's nice. yes. Like I work on the system where like a lot of the rave? people like play wow. games, and then this system, I feel like a lot of the pilots <laughs> wow. don't. <What? laughs> oh my gosh! We're giving us a little show. Acrobatics. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like the gaming chairs, though, would be, like, just, they're just made for the sitting. <laughs> I mean, trucker chairs? That's, that's true. Okay, come on. So, I hear these systems, uh, Dan likes to call these, like, water tractors. It's like a <laughs> water big, tractors. it's like a big hydraulic, like, work class vehicle, right? <laughs> it's, I think it's from the, uh, I think it's from the Gulf, actually. That, that does, that makes sense. Water tractors. Huh? But if you think about it, like a lot of the systems are similar, right? You've got like an onboard HPU. Um, I mean, this actually, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, big hydraulic, like, um, like articulating functions, like, like loaders and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of parallels, right? I feel like the parallels are more to driving heavy, to being a heavy equipment operator in some ways. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it makes sense when you say it. I just like never would have. Yeah. Put that. I, d I don't know. I think there is a lot of people who would argue with me that this is much more like gaming than like driving a tractor. But I don't know. Yeah. I've Meh? never driven a tractor. Oh. But it seems really fun. It's <laughs> wonderful. You should drive a tractor. <laughs> I'll I'll find an opportunity. I did. I did not grow up gaming, but I did grow up driving tractors. Hey, Gabby. Hey, what's I up? I see another Holothurian. Um, I mean, it's not my business anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it is all Tell Kylie. Kylie. I was going to ask if I it was forgotten. a Holothurian or if it was just the dark side of a rock. I didn't want to zoom on it and it'd be a, like, just a oh. shadow. <laughs> I think it's a Holothurian. That's, that seems like a completely reasonable thing to be wrong about. <laughs> on zoom. <laughs> Their like, entire job is to like be like rocks. <laughs> Actually, a I'm lot of these sure. things like blend in so well. Yeah, does yeah. anything really want to eat a Holothurian? I know. Uh, I not mean, me. <laughs> <laughs> it seems extremely Actually, people do eat. It's a little bit like the, the they're jelly very yum. popular yeah, in some places. places. Really? Oh yeah. yeah, there's huge markets for. They for can be eaten coopers. raw, pickled, but I, I or think fried. I mean more like in like in the deep ocean. In the like deep ocean, yeah. yeah. Like whether they're, they're like you don't have upon. to like disguise yourself very much down here. First of all, like nothing can see. Like maybe you have to chemically Video disguise game? yourself. I think that. Yeah, I. I wonder about that because remember the the urchin we saw who had the little balloons full of that yeah, yeah, yeah fluid. Totally. So something is eating things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if there were um, predators interested in in these guys. But I'm not sure huh. what kind of fish would be or what kind of other creature maybe. I I don't know. I okay. think my rule of thumb is if your body is translucent and I can see what's happening inside, I don't I'm not eat it. interested in eating you. <laughs> <laughs> like, deveined shrimp is gross. <laughs> like, not deveined shrimp. I don't like it. Ooh. Apparently, crabs, you, some fish, turtles, and even some species of shark will prey on sea cucumbers. Yeah. That's in the shallow kind of reef environments. I wonder if that's... Probably, but yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I wonder have if that's the truth. Have you eaten a sea cucumber, Megan? Um, <laughs> I've had it in other food in a way where I didn't feel like I fully tasted it. Really? Do you mind if I take bubble? Yeah. Go ahead. Not, not this sea cucumber. I mean, there's many <laughs> types of... <laughs> not literally this one? <laughs> not this handsome fellow. <laughs> What's wrong with him? <laughs> you is he not good enough? That? You would eat this. Uh, <laughs> this little guy is this incredible way specimen. too stylish. <laughs> You've offended him. <laughs> um, so they have to be ugly. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say, tell me all about it. What's the recipe? <laughs> oh my. Just add some fur cocky and just. Honestly. <laughs> over rice. Really. Good to go. What's the Can problem? Can we zoom a little bit to. The upper left in that sediment, there's something that might be sticking up just slightly. It probably is just more sediment. It I'm sorry be. to burst the bubble on the sea cucumbers. That's all right. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Oh, that's most definitely probably sediment. There's several of those little features. Are you talking about the things that look like tiny little trees? Like that one? Yeah, yeah. they look like tiny white mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, try it. Sea cucumbers are actually um, overfished and endangered due to their consumption being so popular hmm. in parts of Asia. I've never oh. seen like a powder it. Their delicacy. Um, yeah, Sorry? it can be powdered. It can also be just Video eaten zoom? whole. It can be made into many things. So it's like a dead thing? Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Because it's sediment covered? Old yeah. Sorry. It Sorry, almost Ryan. looks like a, an old cup coral or something covered in sediment. Or maybe. maybe. I'm going to come in. Yeah, keep it there and I'll just try to practice keeping it in frame. Come wide. Ryan, I'm practicing on, um, uh, I don't know, not overcorrecting the motions I make. Um, I appreciate you a lot. <laughs> you make it look like I'm better at it than I am. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you can, like, hold it, hold it like a for a little bit until I get like, make people nauseous and then pull out. <laughs> <laughs> I think your zooms have been rock solid. I, I think they're getting better. I'm like very much hoping people think I still am in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> it feels, it feels, it really does feel like learning to drive. Like your body's all tense and like you don't know how to park and. Oh man. Like, and then you come and then you get to a stop sign and it's not mountain. clear who should go first. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like kind of like white knuckling, your shoulders kind of lean the direction you're hoping your the whole thing goes. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> when I learned to drive, my dad made me do backwards figure eights and I'm parking what? on What? That's wow. actually Brutal. really cool was, yeah. of him. To like, that was a good training, teaching lesson. Was yeah. It? Was it? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> and we look actually, I'm to the top at, right English, over so here. I'm yeah, we're going confident. that way. My dad started me on a stick shift in a blizzard. Nice. Oh December 12th, oh, the year wow. I turned Look 16. Stick shift, blizzard, upstate attached. New York snow belt. Yeah, wow. But it was brutal. Really those brutal. over was here there anyone are else good. Nice. The but they're all no. attached. No, I was yes. the only one on the road. I mean, I guess in a way In my geo tracker. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. <laughs> I also learned on a stick shift, which was, I think, a bit of a blessing. Yeah. Mm. No, that is a good move. It's like easier to learn that way than to like try to learn later, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Not in a blizzard though. So speaking of driving in a blizzard, earlier we were asked about um, spatial disorientation. Mm -hmm. And I had done a tiny bit of looking earlier and it's pretty interesting that pilots who fly airplanes who have spatial disorientation. Usually it's like weather, rain, or flying at night. But it's actually a known thing for ROV pilots too, and some people do study it, but the kind of relevant variables are completely different since we're not actually in the environment the way that a pilot in an airplane or a human occupied vehicle would be. But the variables are more the screens and all the different data feeds and so that sounds right yeah so the idea is like can you still be disoriented um spatially um as an rov pilot and it's certainly yes and so people kind of study well how many different things can, can we throw in front of a pilot an rov pilot to get them to be spatially oriented and how many is too many and how many is too few and what kinds of different um visual references or platforms or control methods are most useful essentially to mm -hmm. orient oneself. There is kind of like an interesting effect. You can be very disoriented and then you pull in one extra camera or one sonar or one something mm -hmm. and everything in your brain just sort of shifts and clicks. Yeah. But and all of a yeah. sudden the surroundings make sense again. You just like just throw in something out of the corner of your eye. 
Or maybe it's just a shadow. Like you turn on a light and you get a shadow in a direction. You're like, oh, that part of the mountain goes in, not out. Yeah, Th that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And some people, some of these like folks who are interested in kind of human factors and understanding these relationships are uh, moving towards and interested in these more multi-sensory interfaces that can involve more than just kind of visual cues or um, platforms to orient oneself. Is there anything about like ship motion in there? Like the different, like your body moving mm. in a way that's contradictory to what you're seeing and navigating? It's a good question. I didn't see anything like that. I, I just skimmed through some proceedings that several different experts shared short little brief bits about it. I, I do know a little bit about like, um, like very little about uh, like ROV, like virtual reality sort of like tr training or piloting from, from a virtual reality sor sort of setup. Um, and the ship motion is oh, yeah. a big problem from doing it shipboard uh, because yes. you're visualizing motion and your body is moving separately differently and it makes a lot of people sick. That um, is like the times on board I feel the most seasick are when I catch one of our cameras and I see the ship moving and I felt that ship move just prior. Yeah. Oh. Can we zoom on these little weird yep. things? When we do yep, yep. Argus good. only dives and we just have the Argus HD looking down at the bottom, that is, that makes me incredibly ill. That like the heave. Yeah, you just yeah. visualize the heave constantly and you feel it differently. It can be difficult. Um, one nice thing about you zoom? this system is that Herc's motion is totally uncoupled from the ship as long as you've got some nice slack in the tether. Mm -hmm. And so if you're just focused on Herc HD, you're not seeing any heave. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that can help a bit with that sort of effect. We yeah. have Steve who chimed in. Not Steve, I'm sorry. Todd. Todd chimed in and he says he's in the process of teaching his teenager how to drive. This is <laughs> just the morning SPL he needed today. Awesome. <laughs> Good Aww. luck, Todd. Yay, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching my teenager how to drive too. And ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that seems like one of the most stressful things you it can do. It is. I do think I do think it took years off my parents' Oops. life. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> do you have what you need, uh, science? Yes. Thank you. Bridge, huh? Oops. Could we step three zero meters bearing zero five two? Thank you. And what are we thinking these are? Old stems of a uh, sponge or a coral? Or yeah, maybe something like that. They don't look like really vertebrae like we thought we saw yeah, in previous yeah. dives. But and there's quite a few of them yeah. surrounding in the sediment. I'm not sure. Kind of looked like an old sponge Yeah. Thing. chunk. I recently um, tried out uh, a virtual reality headset that somebody, a scientist, uh, a marine geologist in Paris, uh, put together with um, seafloor imagery overlaid on top of bathymetry oh. so that you could literally be standing and walking around on the submarine volcano that you're studying and you can actually do geological measurements um That's so there's cool. little tools in built into the kind of hand the little hand controller that a lot of headsets have so you can walk around explore different parts of the ridge or volcano make measurements Can we see how big this rock is up here? Oh, that looks like a good one. That looks big. Yeah, it's probably too big. Looks bigs. bigger than a baked potato. Yeah. That <laughs> looks <laughs> maybe too big. It still looks less than 20 to me. Yeah, maybe you're right. 
That one right there. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, I think he's about 20 squared. There might be a little whip or something right in front of it. We really have not seen all that much biology on this watch. Yeah, we haven't. That's true. This one. Yeah, this guy. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, those are the best type. Uh, both forward boxes are open. Um, now? Both are taken unless you think it could fit with the one we just picked up in F. It's okay. We do not need it. That's a, a no on a sample. Roger. Mm. Oh, little floating shrimp. to that uh, steeper part. Yes, yes. Looks like it. In looks like Argus, it. That almost oh. looks like it could be really busted up golems. Oh. What would you all like to share? What is your favorite thing to collect? Um, they weren't specific, so it could be on this expedition or period. I can tell you that Amber's favorite Rush. thing to collect right yeah. now is angular volcanic okay. encrusted yeah, rocks. Oh, you would be wrong. Oh, I'm You'd wrong. You'd be so what? wrong. So, okay, yes. tell us all about it, Amber. Yeah, it's just That's yeah, what I like to collect. Yeah for my study okay. uh, it doesn't, mm. it gets but if i'm just points. out hiking or here. doing here some sort of field here. mapping on land okay. or whatnot mm -hmm. what i like to collect is actually um so it's microcrystalline quartz Rush. so chert Rush. and it is the name is escaping me right now what is hold on You can tell it's really early in the morning. Chalcedony, there we go. Chalcedony. I love picking up chalcedony. Because okay. I'm a little bit of a magpie. I like shiny things. Mm -hmm. Chalcedony shines, and it has kind of like this crust, a nice botryoidal sort of texture that it forms, and it's translucent. And it is not something I can study at all because it is a secondary uh, mineral formation. So it means my rocks are actually altering into this. But it is very pretty to look at. So I have lots of it at home. <laughs> nice. 
Megan, what's your favorite thing to collect? Sorry, what was that? I was listening to the pilots. Oh, um, they want to know what's your favorite thing to collect. Ah. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it for a second. No problem. We have time. I mean, I love collecting. When, when I have done work that is directly related to something I'm researching, it's very exciting to get a sample that you know you're going to spend a lot of time with mm -hmm. in the lab. So for me, that would have been hydrothermal deposits and volcanic rocks. But um, I really love seeing the pilots do interesting technical or fun kind of sampling uh, events like snipping corals really delicately or getting some kind of new species. Um, things like that are very exciting. I would say I do not really like push cores. No. Um, I, no. I think not oh, so much. I, I don't think any of either. us do. I don't think I, anybody likes they're them. They're awful. They're I, so I shouldn't annoying. speak for Kylie. I think they're the worst. Yeah, <laughs> I do not take any pleasure from getting push cores. <laughs> yeah, it was so it was good. Impossible. Oh, it's always yeah. something like that, right? Like the first time using, I think last year, my first time using the arm in two years was like a scoop. It was so bad. <laughs> Did you say it's unnatural? <laughs> push cores are the worst. Why do you think mm. they're the worst? They're the worst to process. Mm. <laughs> there, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they do. They don't always smell bad, but they they're they're just they're not really nobody's come up with the better kind of system of collecting a push core and they're quite difficult for everybody for the pilots, for processing, often they're a bit finicky and annoying. It's just so easy to disturb the sediment. And mm. if you don't have a real specific use for, for them, like if you're not directly studying it, I also find that they don't get a lot of use scientifically if we're just collecting them as like baseline information. People are much more interested in rock samples and biological samples, so often they can be less popular for us but but the people that really do study them who are interested in the sediment seafloor sediment water interface like that those are processed quite differently and specifically on the ship so that that's more exciting i like to hear about what people are interested with that sometimes it's microbial analyses um, or other kinds of multidisciplinary questions but um, but yeah I guess when you get a really perfect push core that's that's kind of exciting when you can see all the layers and it's been sealed perfectly into the quiver and then we process it perfectly that that's really nice to see especially at kind of hydrothermal I mean, vents. I've definitely a been on heat or something in the air too oh, yeah. yeah it's like a very satisfying one definitely I've not only been on a cruise where we have like 20 push cores on the vehicle and the scientists are very serious about them and you're very efficient. Yeah. You get to a site, you take like five per site so that you get um, some good statistics on the site and the pilots get very efficient at them and the scientists know the sediment is stuff you can sample effectively with a push core. Like, then it's good. Then it's real good. Um, and it's also a pretty fun game to try and fit 20 some up push cores <laughs> on the vehicle in these like crates and you have to like navigate the core through the crate and like oh wow because they're all like lined up on the sides it's pretty wild um but those are pretty specific circumstances and a lot of times it's just frustrating you end up with like just an inch or two of sediment and you like can't get the core and you're just not set up uh kylie are you out of your autos right now and if I do another DVL reset. Please don't.
Cruz? Yeah. Let's okay. get going. Feel good about early back? Okay. Bridge, Jack. Eh? Hey, Lexi, could we step three zero meters bearing zero five two? <laughs> Thank you. What is this? Spatial disorientation. So when we think about our 12 to 4 watch, and since this might be one of the last ones, mm -hmm. what would you all consider to be the highlight like? I've oh. heard Holothorian come up many times, anemones many times. <laughs> I don't know. I think this has been a really unique watch. Like I've, yeah. I have had like so much fun on this watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. I know. I like... I mean, there we saw some cool stuff, right? But mm -hmm. I don't know. This is a good. This was a really good watch. On the whole, the energy was quite good. Also, the twelve to four, like the nighttime. Yeah. The daytime cycle, we have fun. The nighttime cycle, though, like we're bringing a special brand <laughs> of energy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that energy is sleep deprivation. Uh, yeah. Yes, manic energy yeah. fueled by the lack of sleep. <laughs> or too much sleep. Yeah. Too much. Who's getting too much sleep? So we saying I, I sleep any time that I am not eating or on watch. <laughs> so you could claim that I get too much sleep. Wow. Well, I, don't I know wish. If you get too much, Amber. It seems like you're getting the right amount. <laughs> I go into our room and I'm like, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess scientifically speaking, or if we were to put this on a website, the highlight of 12 to 4 watch vibes, the connection of the team. Yeah. What do we think? Yeah. yeah, I would think so. I, I love the, yeah, this team and the, the vibe of the van vibe. Yeah. Van vibe. Can we get a zoom right here? <laughs> <laughs> Classic camper. <laughs> it's because there is biology on it. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks like a crinoid. I wasn't I wasn't just looking at the rocks, although I am also definitely 100% looking at the rocks. 
I think a big highlight is going to be that that swimming serianthus, and yeah. then the oh, jellyfish. What, what was it called again? The serianthus mm -hmm. that we uh, we got some of the tentacles from, and then it went swimming off after the arm for a while. Yeah. I think that's going to be a pretty big highlight. Yeah. I also really enjoyed like like the vibe, the van vibe, but also like the learning energy in yeah. here has been really strong. Mm -hmm. I agree. We had a lot of moments that could have been really tense, and we like handled them really well as a team. And like, it's also a, a little coral or sea oh, pen yeah. right here. I see that. Agree. Nice. I eye. don't think I've talked this much about geology <laughs> since early <laughs> undergrad. Awesome. <laughs> I feel like we've talked about a lot of different topics, which has been cool. Yeah, I've learned a lot, definitely, from being on this watch with everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at all those grapes, all <laughs> the crust grapes, grapes you cannot eat. <laughs> it's also been nice, just there's been a lot of great questions from the public, from the mm -hmm. internet, from everyone who's listening. So that sparked us going off into different questions and terrains of inquiry so that's been cool yeah oh, what is this bag? little jelly oh can we zoom on the jelly oh oh, oh. What oh what a little one. Oh, is this oh, the little oh the little gosh. hat yeah <laughs> i think it is the, the floating hat Nia, did you call it the Star Wars hat? <laughs> the Darth, the Darth, Darth Vader, Vader hat. Darth Vader, that's what it's Cartoon like. Darth Vader. <laughs> yes. The little helmet. This guy seems a little bit more lampshady. So Can I play with the yes, lights a little bit? This is definitely a lampshade one. <laughs> Got a little skirt. Oh. Nice. Oh. 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 That was quick. Oh, he oh uh, there he is. <laughs> Arg, we are going to 058. Hello. Ooh. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello, my friend. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit getting just like caught in our thrust wash. Yeah, looks like it. Just going for a ride. Mm -hmm. Jellyfish are so cute. They yeah. really are. <laughs> it's really hard to not make sounds. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's giving us a really nice show. Beautiful. Bye, buddy. Is this on SPL? neither <laughs> another holothurian
<laughs> yeah. That's 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 definitely how I intended it. I'm really sorry I said that. <laughs> it's pretty horrible. <laughs> I, the light thing's already done. <laughs> yeah, the light thing was, was, it was a nice contrast. <laughs> light thing is already done. Not at all. No. I'm kind of into that. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, all have agreed. <laughs> Certainly, the amount of life I've had as a conscious being. <laughs> I would be pressing all the buttons all the time. I used to do that with my dad's record player. <laughs> Out of all our ship tracks. I think it works. It's like, I, I get nervous when I feel like people are like really good at it and I'm like scared to ask questions and I feel like it's been a really uh, approachable energy. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been doing so many recoveries and starts. <laughs> Amber, somebody would like to know what's uh, chert? chert? Yeah, chert. So, chert is um, one, it you can't see through it, it's opaque for the most part, mm -hmm. but it is microcrystalline quartz. So, quartz. Chalcedony, chert, jasper, flint, all of these things are basically the same. But the difference comes in of coloration kind of and um, the size of the crystals. So when you think of quartz, you think of these bigger crystals that are nice, they're visible, you can actually collect single crystals that are huge for a chert, flint, agate, uh, chalcedony, all of these, you can't see the individual crystals. So it almost looks like glass, but not quite. And um, so flint and chert, those are both, uh, so like flint commonly used for arrowheads so that sort of material, that's flint and chert. Uh, then you have chalcedony and agate, which are the more translucent ones. And you can get, since they form this botryoidal sort of texture mm -hmm. most of the time, you'll have these little grape-like features uh, in layers. And they can be of different colors layered on top of each other. So when you slice them, uh, you can put a light underneath them and see through them, and they look really pretty. Hmm, okay. I don't think so. I don't think we've found a good nodule field. Yeah, not on this cruise. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was really hoping to see that this cruise. I don't know what's different about here that we just like don't get those big fields of nodules. So you say so that's what the scoop would have been for, right? Yeah. yeah. So you say the only thing we really used oh the scoop God, for like was getting the. Um, yeah, it's like a the, it's like a whole field of marbles. Well, the only Ooh. thing I think we actually used it for was, was getting, getting the plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that sounds cool. It's I love to see that. Yeah, field of marbles. <laughs> <laughs> Except they'd all be these little black crust marbles and just scoop. Hmm. I think I actually missed that one watching the last uh, last cruise. What's up? Mm -hmm. The collection of uh, oh. yeah, the collection. We did it a bunch of times. There were so many just like fields of them. We'd like get sick of them in the same way you the get issue? sick of like lots of sediment. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, I would never get sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> so pretty. Yeah. We have seen so little. Yeah, it's always in terms nice of to biology. See a tall crinoid or sponge. Yeah. Oh, and there, there's another one of those little. Um, yeah, spongy one of things these. in the background. Those little yeah. for forums. Uh, what are they called? Xeno. Xeno phyophoria. Oh. That's what these little guys are. This that we thought were bones. The oh, okay. That one. Oops. Xenophyophoria. <laughs> okay. It's a type of foram. Oh. Foraminifera. It's a tiny little one, uh, but we've seen a few of them. Uh, we've seen quite a couple of them. Yeah. 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 They're common at, in these depths. So, w so what? I mean, I know you told me what the name is, but what is that? A foraminifera. It's a foraminifera. Yeah. Which is. Um. So, they're see the exact, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but they're um, little single-celled organisms, let's see, Just hang tight. video yeah. zoom, Roger, are they protists? Yeah. Oh yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? Like they we were protists, but I was like, no, we don't call them that anymore. Because um, is like a diatoma for him? Um, or no? Oh, nice, this is a good zoom. Ooh, very good zoom. It almost looks like a rose. It does. Okay. So these these xenophyophoria extract minerals from their surroundings what? and uses them to form oh. an exoskeleton. Come wide. Yeah, it's cruising. These are weird little pressure systems. Ah, oh, okay. So they used to be, so they were classified as primitive foraminifera, but then later they were placed within the sponges. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, now I see it. And he is extruding some sediment. It well, is extruding sediment. Let's let him do that. <laughs> Respecting the modesty of the world. It's like when you accidentally <laughs> open the bathroom door on somebody. You're like, oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Bubble can. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was empty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that worm definitely thought it was going to be dark down here for the next <laughs> millennia. So, <laughs> this is on us.
I was just reading that um, that the Xenophyophoria, their growth is episodic, which oh. means that uh, in one study and one one uh, specific uh, species, and they would grow for in phases of two That's to three fine. days, and then they would have a phase of rest <laughs> that would I last just had to two months. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> no, I just think I If you're looking at the quad screen on Nautilus Live, uh, channel one would be Hercules' view, and channel two would be Argus' view. Ooh. Is it a ton of four? Is oh. that just a you're indebted some, something to your in the in the water column. You're Whoa. indebted to your Z's. You owe your Z's. Can we zoom on this Negative. strange thing right here? Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that it? <laughs> Little shrimp. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Look I think shrimp feet. are one of my favorite things to follow swimming because they're oh. little legs. <laughs> Good it luck, obviously sir. did not did want not like you that. to follow it. <laughs> Exit, stage <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he is late. Every time I leave my house, I have to go back and make sure I lock the door. Oh. Yeah, I think because I'm at sea, I like forget what it feels like to like be in and have responsibility in the house, <laughs> and I like oh, don't I trust myself. I, I really struggle with turning on and off. I don't even cook. So like, <laughs> 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 it's like young, yeah. <laughs> I'll get out of my house and I'll be like, the oven is on, all the burners are on. I, the door is unlocked. Like <laughs> the oven is on or preheating. <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh, I am. I was off. That's I'm having a, a very um, 
I think the internet Seriously. doesn't. <laughs> the internet doesn't appreciate one-sided conversation. <laughs> it's like those um those like fill in the blank things like a verb, a noun, and like you're, like, you're Van Mad Libs. <laughs> Me mad living about how bad my anxiety is when I can't figure out if I lost my jaw. Oh boy, you can tell that it is almost 4 a.m. <laughs> I'm sorry. Band band. I don't, I don't actually band. think it was ever any different than this. <laughs> 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 I don't feel like we've been building towards 4 a.m. <laughs> 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 pretty constant <laughs> level of feeling like we've dumped the oven on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really sums me up. I think I left the oven on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> me well, too, and like I don't weeks. cook. <laughs> 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 it's pretty bad. Is that something? The white thing or is that sediment? <clears throat> in the middle? Yeah, in the middle. A sediment in it. I think so. I think that's just weird. Talk texture. about depth perception problems. <laughs> Video zoom. <laughs> Let's figure this out. Are you getting a uh, spatial disorientation? That's sediment, right? Yeah, sediment. Yeah. Like right sediment, where the laser is? Yeah. Okay, Looks come like wide. It. I don't know. Oh. Looks like we're gonna miss out on this steep, steep section that we're approaching. Yeah, I was hoping we'd get there. I was too, I but I wasn't that optimistic about it. Stock sponge. <laughs> do we have a sponge? We oh, do. Yes, Yay. let's zoom on that. Something to look at. Finally, another sponge and, and a, a crinoid. crinoid. <laughs> and an enemy. Oh, wait, and an enemy. And, and a halberry and a blob. <laughs> Okay, wow. let's zoom on all of them. <laughs> I don't think they'll all be no, in I'm the same kidding. frame. <laughs> okay, I vote for the sponge, the stock okay. sponge. Let me mess. And then the anemone. Let me see. Okay. No. Yes, no. Not that one. Let me like that. What's going on? Like that. Okay. Okay, hold on. No, they watch. I heard the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, video zoom. Come in a little bit. Oh, a brittle star as well. Nice. Thanks. Uh, you want to mess with the lights, Gabby? Might be a different kind of star. Yeah. Mm. I'm missing a star. Is it a Brisinget again? Looks like it has cool. several legs. Oh, cool. Can we look at this uh, star real quick? Keep it right on, on our toes. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> keep your hand on the iris button. Mm. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the anemone. I'll just kind of like pan over. Oh, hey. Oops, oops, oops. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And then let's get the crime away. Let's see if we can find them. Donde estas? Oh, there you are, buddy. Uh, ah, it has a okay. brittle star associate. I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Come wide. Coming into a watch change. Signing off back here. Over to Steve. Thank you all for tuning in to the 12 to 4 watch. Please be patient as we transition.
video so zoom. Our four to eight folks no, can watch join in. Never mind. Have a good one. Not for us. <laughs> oh, in the winch. Good morning, 48. Hey, everyone. Uh, RV and Steve, we've been doing 20 or 30 meter steps towards this, uh, looks like a nice slope cone up, a nice steeper slope in about 15, 20 meters uh, on our way to waypoint four. Anything we want to change about that plan? Not right now. Uh, can I take a look at the sample sheet here? Yeah, so we've got four rocks so far. 
but we're always on the lookout for more, but we can keep uh, moving, specifically looking for more angular type rocks, but anything will do if it looks loose. I think uh, as we get into the steeper portion of the dive, it'll be more difficult to find rocks, but if you, yeah, what do you think? Any angular looking ones? Can do that quickly before we initiate our move, if you have enough room. Dan, you're not on SPL. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it seems like lots of rocks here. There's a rock slide there. Seems like, huh? Seems I believe like. I saw that last night, too. That it seemed like they didn't want to move. Really? There's something here, maybe. Up in this pile. So many choices. As angular as possible. Angular as possible. All the angular ones were there back to the left. That helps. Good. Yeah, there might be something here. Oh no, that's too big. I see a little one sitting there. You're talking this one? Yeah, some of these little angle guys. Yeah, that might be a candidate. I like the brick size one. This one you mean? Yeah. Looks good to me. Okay. We can take as many rocks as we need to. Here, in fact, more is better probably since, oh, there's also one off to the right. That's not bad too. Here. Yep. Have they pitched any plates yet? Yeah, or they've pitched one. Okay. Size one in the middle of the camera there. Nope. Nope. No, nope. Let me, let me circle <laughs> it here. To the left. It's a small brick. Assuming it moves. Yeah, it looks like it moved. Maybe get a finger and roll it out of there. Just pick it up. It's up to you. Looks pretty good. Screen grabs. Come up. Please. Thank you. It's got some some weathering for sure, but still we'll stow it. Yeah. Okay. Starboard side? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Any uh compartments of concern? Um I mean 
there are just rocks and everything. C and D are open if it fits, but if not, one of the larger boxes is fine. I think one of the larger boxes for that particular rock. Won't know until you get there, but. Um, echo? Sure. I don't think that we're going the smaller ones. <laughs> Could have happened. Okay, close the box. Closing. Rebecca, was that 87? Yep. Thank you. Else you want to look at? Craft is secure. All right, there. thank you. Zero six four. Zero six four. Right. Yeah, we've got about thirty meters to the slope start. Although I prefer the contours may not be as accurate, so we'll that'll be a good test. A little. Something, something in Argus, but no walls of death this morning. That's boring. Yeah. Not yet. We went vertical. We went vertical in terror. I strive to please. But <laughs> Ship move underway. Roger. How have uh, everything's been okay with the wire? Morning today. No, uh, I don't know. I can't see uh, concerns. Can't see wire cam. I can see uh, it seems pretty dark. <laughs> Need a light down there. And the wire tension. <laughs> yeah, the tension looks all right. Okay. It would be nice to have the A-frame lights on so we could see the wire, but. The boat's going in the pointy direction, so not too worried about it. And you gotta choose. Look at the wire or look at birds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are there birds out there? No, but if the A-frame light goes on. I kind of miss the birds. They were entertaining. Oh. oh. Unpopular opinion, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Dan. You miss the birds? <laughs> <laughs> it's our last watch. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> Actually, it's not our last watch, is it? Yeah. You know something I don't? No. no. <laughs> Second to last. <laughs> okay. Well, good morning, world. Thank you for joining us. We are excited to have you um, participate Put, um, in our DSC up there for me. exploration um, for this particular yep. dive. We're exploring it might the not Western be Bridge. On PC2 yet, but go ahead and then we'll see. Oh, look. Of an um, unexplored seamount. Okay. Uh, is that PC2? That's PC2, yeah. Okay, I'll get it for you. Thanks. Thanks. You want your 4K? Mm, sure. We're going to be moving I even along a 4.8 kilometer transect upslope. Um, the deepest depth was approximately 3,166 meters, and we're going to be moving toward the summit. This particular site has never been previously explored, and 
there's been no geological samples ever collected from here. So we're kind of excited because this is our opportunity to collect volcanic rock material that's going to be really important for us to understand the geological history of this seamount and the overall broader region. Additionally, we'll be on the lookout for iron manganese rich crusts from depths greater than 3,000 meters from this site. That's going to help inform crust geochemistry. And as always on this watch, we'll be keeping our eyes open for any habitat forming biology, such as beautiful deep sea corals like Victagorgia, <laughs> and a variety of different sponges, the glass sponges. So, so glad you can join us. Excited to see what we can see. The, let's see here, we'll do introductions. And how about the last book that we've read? Well, I'm assuming that everybody reads books. Maybe I shouldn't make that assumption. But introduce yourself and the last book that you read. Jordan, why don't we start with you? <laughs> Hi, my name is Jordan Akiyama. I'm a uh, public affairs specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, last book that I read. Does, do comic books count? because that's yeah. pretty much all I read. Comic books, graphic novels, maybe you could tell us what the difference is between the two. I mean, graphic novels are generally just sort of collected editions of comic books. Usually you'll do an entire run of maybe six issues, which usually amounts to like one story arc. Uh, that's usually what a graphic novel is in comparison to, you know, just a single issue comic book, whereas manga itself is uh, the Japanese version of comics. More uh, pages. <laughs> last one I read was this older story called Creatures. It was sort of like a Japanese horror sci-fi. Um, I downloaded a bunch of books on uh, Kindle Unlimited for coming on this trip and that was sort of one of the ones that I uploaded to my e-reader and yeah, it was entertaining. It's kind of a cool futuristic uh, apocalyptic world. So, um, just a second, um, yeah. Nav, uh, would it be too aggressive to go to 50 meter moves? Uh, we are approaching the slope. We could okay. probably get one 50 meter in before we go. Um, okay. I'm happy with that. I can yeah. always cry I'll stop. Roger. I'll stop, reverse engines, full thrust. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're just completely... 